scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Open our eyes, grant us the grace to see in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please, I want you to pay attention very carefully. Um, the Lord put it in my heart this week and next week. We're going to have a revision series from tonight into next week um, before we get into the next series that we have. There is a lot to cover and um, we'll try to catch up especially because of my absence in the last few weeks so there is a lot we really are behind schedule but the lord has put it in my heart um, so we're going to deal with very serious matters and the lord wants to bring to our minds and our understanding these truths and these keys again sincerely from the depth of my heart i want you to excel i want you to live very fulfilled lives we have a mandate not to a congregation but to a generation and we continue to press trusting God to grant the grace to make this true it is my desire as a man of God and as a leader to see people excel all wise and in accordance to the prophetic word um, this year I really have been pressing to show us the ways of the spirit that have been allocated for the various results that we desire. I only pray that by now we would have grown to a level in the spirit where we place value on these truths. You see, the thing about truth, the Bible says you can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. And then the Bible speaking about wisdom says that those who seek me early, there is timing to impact. There is timing to acquisition of wisdom. Every time is not convenient. There is a time lapse that when you allow to pass without your pressing into certain dimensions of the wisdom of God, you will pay for it. It will not come easy. It will come at a very serious cost. Praise the Lord. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. Let's read it together. One to read. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. The apostle is speaking now. He's saying part of my apostolic assignment is that every once and again, I, as a system of mentorship, remind you of the truths that you probably may have known. Some may be on their way understanding it. Some would have held it to a measure. But he said, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. It was Dr. Mike Murdoch that said, repetition is what creates persuasion that means the more a thought and a truthful information is repeated 
eventually your mind will embrace it as true and your life will show the results are we together so um i will title this keys of the kingdom the keys of the kingdom you can put in bracket revision series the keys of the kingdom it's a revision series this is part one next week we'll look at part two the goal is to bring to our understanding it's like a refresher course praise the lord this week and next week by the grace of god i'm going to be dealing with the matters of the kingdom the factors the laws of the spirit the truths that we have so labored through the years to teach and continue to teach that are responsible for power for grace for relevance for a life of meaning impact and so on and so forth are we together the keys of the kingdom a revision series matthew chapter 16 and verse 19 lord we receive understanding matthew 16 and verse 19 read with me is projected everyone inside and outside one two go and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven uh-huh and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven let's look at amplified the king james version here does not do the kind of justice that we seek um it doesn't give you the kind of expression that that will help you understand let's read it now and then i begin to teach one to read and i will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven uh-huh and whatsoever you bind declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already bound in heaven and whatsoever you lose declare lawful on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven thank you father for understanding let us grow let us rise in the name of jesus let us become living wonders in the name of jesus christ jesus is speaking here and he's making a very interesting statement please pay attention remember i told us that jesus raised disciples who would later become apostles through a system of discipleship that we called mentorship and the way he started very interesting from matthew chapter 1 2 3 4 when he was done with his temptation he departed in the power of the spirit right from matthew chapter 5 until he resurrected every day was a bible study session every day was a prayer session every day was a mentorship session they were exact spiritual truth that he was teaching them he was teaching them on the kingdom reorganizing their understanding about various aspects of the kingdom life he brought many prophecies to lamb light and began to shed light on them he brought many perspectives misrepresentations about the god of the hebrews that they had known and began to correct them then he used parables parables to explain what he called the mysteries of the kingdom are we together and so when we get to the 16th chapter of matthew he's now talking about the keys now theologically speaking there is only one key to the kingdom everybody say to the kingdom there is only one key to the kingdom and that key happens to be the door himself jesus said it this way he said i am the way i am the truth i am the life no man cometh to the father except by or through me so we know that there is only one key to the kingdom there are not many ways almost all of the founders of different religions around the world out of the three to five thousand religions we have currently and growing in the world all of the founders propose to be the keys of the kingdom that means they are the access point to enter into a certain dimension of life civilization consciousness or reality are we together we have several religions across the world with different founders purporting different facets of the revelation of god but jesus came and made a bold statement 
that he was and still remains the only authorized access so there is only one key to the kingdom the bible declares that there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved do you know why i'm teaching you this look up please look up the time has come in the church where we must be biblically sound we must be theologically sound the context of our spiritual communication must be balanced must be intelligent must be theologically sound you must be able to make full proof of your ministry defending the faith by understanding what you believe not just believing blindly are we together the days that we live in would require conviction conviction that comes not only through encounters but through understanding so i'm taking our time to teach you this because many believers are not mentored to understand god the average believer understands different aspects of power glory here and there but the sequential growth this kingdom has an explanation you need to know the way the kingdom was built and how it operates are we together yes so this looks like very basic but it's amazing the level of failure you will command not knowing this there is only one key to the kingdom there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved are we together the bible says in romans chapter 10 reading from verse 8 to 10 it says that um the word is nigh thee in thy heart and in thy mouth even the word of faith that we preach it says that if thou shalt confess with thy heart the lord jesus thy mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead it says you shall be saved are we together yes then it says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and then with the mouth confession is made that leads to salvation so this is the technology that god employed so when you follow that door who is christ the bible calls him the new and the living way he becomes the only access point if you have not passed through that door you are not saved are we together it doesn't matter how you are around church you are not saved nicodemus came to jesus by night and said rabbi john 3 thou art a man we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him then in verse 3 jesus is teaching now and he says verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again he's talking about being born again now he shall not see the kingdom of god are we together and then except a man be born of water verse 5 now and the spirit he shall not enter the kingdom so we know there is one key and only key to the kingdom but there when you get into the kingdom there are the keys of the kingdom not a key the the basis for access that help us to function in this kingdom there are many the laws of the kingdom the methodologies of the kingdom you need access to just one key jesus the son of the living god the new and living way but when you come into the kingdom listen carefully you need to know that there are keys of the kingdom say keys of the kingdom and the sequence is this watch this a believers come you stand here face me please my friend please come stand here face me no you stand here are we together my dear come now watch this they represent different levels this gentleman for instance is the one the bible calls a natural man everybody say natural man that means one who is alienated from the life of god he is not yet a partaker of the life of god through the new birth experience that we call salvation is someone learning you have to understand what i am teaching you the first ministry that this man needs is not a preacher's ministry 
the first ministry that this man needs is the ministry that the Bible calls the goodness of God listen very carefully the Bible says it is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance so there is a dimension of the encounter with the goodness of God that this man needs to have and that dimension is sponsored by the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit is the one who can make this man even have the need see the need for Jesus in his life John 16 Jesus still in his mentorship session began to introduce the disciples to the ministry of the Holy Spirit Jesus started by saying I have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now he says how be it listen carefully that when he the spirit of truth is come he shall guide you into all truth are we together he shall take of what is mine and shall give to you then the bible says that the holy spirit has a threefold ministry to the world the world of natural men he says he will convict you of three things number one of sin say sin number two of righteousness say righteousness number three of judgment are we together so it is the ministry of the holy spirit to bring this man to a point now he will need the cooperation of a preacher because the bible says how shall they hear except they be a preacher are we together are you understanding the methodology of the kingdom except they be a preacher so god depends on men to allow the ministry of the holy spirit to find expression now this gentleman is sitting in koinonia or any meeting and he hears the word of the lord coming and listen it is not any preaching that saves understand this it is not any preaching that saves there is an exact spiritual information that leads to the salvation new birth now all truth in the bible have a measure of light and liberty that they bring listen to me but there is an exact message that turns a sinner to become a righteous person are, are you following now this is a refresher course we are dealing with the things that many believers do not know that continues to make their life and their assignment within their environment ineffective now it is true that i can teach any message and raise an altar call but that even if it is in one minute there has to be a way of routing that altar call such that the content are located to be captured for salvation is represented there are we together the gospel that saves is called the gospel of salvation everybody shout say the gospel of salvation now there are many gospels in the bible by many gospels we don't mean erroneous gospels the word gospel just means an announcement of glad tidings it doesn't have anything necessarily to do with jesus as it were it's just a proclamation of glad tidings the word gospel means good news are we together a proclamation of an information that gladdens the heart that's what is called gospel so there is the gospel of salvation and the gospel of salvation is a message everybody say a message the gospel of salvation is the revelation listen carefully the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love a revelation of the father's love are we together manifested in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ and the object of that sacrifice is man first and then creation the death of jesus does not only affect men it affects creation are we together so the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the son jesus to man first and then creation and then man's response everybody say response man's response to that gospel who had believed our report to that man the arm of the lord had been revealed are we together yes so when i hear the gospel what is the gospel for god so loved the world that he gave he proved his love for man by allowing jesus his son to come to the earth now watch this the assignment of jesus on earth was not to die 
death was simply a gateway to help him fulfill that assignment are we together jesus came to earth to fulfill a threefold assignment number one jesus came as a representation the image of the invisible god until jesus came they did not know god so they would they would accredit or credit both the things that were done by the devil fallen angels and god to the god of the hebrews until jesus came there was no bodily representation of the god of the heavens so jesus came as the image of the christ made manifest are we together the bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory even as the glory of the father full of grace and truth and the bible calls him the image of the invisible god the invisible god that hitherto we only heard about and a few people had certain encounters of different dimensions of him that god is now personified in the christ so you can look at jesus to know who god is jesus came as the will the thoughts of god the word word of god is the word logos the thoughts the intent of a man seeking out for expression are we following tonight this is basic salvation that is not basic at all it is the strengthener of your christian faith you have to know how you came into this life so jesus came to reveal to men the image of the invisible god as a commitment and a desire to help men know god number two jesus came as an agent of reconciliation the bible calls him the mediator of the new covenant what does that mean the bridge like two aggrieved parties the word mediator is a legal term it's a system of reconciliation that means two aggrieved parties or at least an aggrieved party that has broken relationship and fellowship so jesus came as the bridge but in order to fulfill that ministry as savior and mediator he needed to pass through the legal system of the spirit and there are ordinances that have been in the realm of the spirit that he had to subscribe to ordinance number one the soul that seen it it shall die it's a law that any soul that sins the penalty is death are we together yes ordinance number two without the shedding of blood i'm doing a quick review so that we'll just pass this area without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins no atonement no remission are we together so jesus needed to satisfy that legal term number three that except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone so only death leads to resurrection anything that is alive in itself cannot resurrect it will have to die and then resurrect with another life are we together now so jesus being the mediator watch this number one he came as a manifestation of the image of the invisible god number two he came as the mediator of the new covenant to fulfill that ministry of reconciliation drawing men connecting men to god and he needed to route it through abraham and by so doing fulfill the legal claims of justice the third reason why jesus came was to perform his high priestly ministry you have to understand this that he is a priest after the order of melchizedek that even in resurrection he had to take his blood the blood of the eternal sacrifice and he went before the tabernacle in heaven that was adumbrated by that that was on earth and he poured his blood upon that tabernacle so that once and for all salvation became real to men are we together yes so the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the love of the father demonstrated through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus to the end that when you hear that gospel and believe that it is true 
that Jesus has satisfied the legal claims of justice that now standing before the throne you stand guiltless with the righteousness that is equal to that of the Christ are we together not like that of the Christ when you receive that report the Bible says immediately two things happen to you number one the first thing that happens to you when you declare Jesus as Savior and Lord is that there is a translation spiritually speaking from the domain the kingdom of darkness that means a domain that is under the legal authorization of Satan into the kingdom of his dear son now follow me very carefully are we together and then the Bible says that when there is that translation the second thing that happens and all these things happen concurrently is that by believing it is credited to you for righteousness like faithful Abraham I hope you know the first person to hear the gospel was Abraham our father the gospel was preached to Abraham in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed Abraham believed God and it was credited to him and that formula of Abraham is what was given to the saints to hear the report of the Lord and to believe by faith then it is credited to us as righteousness people like Kenyon define righteousness as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt without a sense of condemnation and without a sense of inferiority this is what he calls righteousness I will want to add that more than that righteousness is the manifestation of the nature of the Christ in a man it's more than just an act the manifestation of the nature of Christ in a man is called righteousness righteousness is first who you are by reason of your believing the report of the Lord now number three we are given the Holy Spirit according to Galatians chapter 3 Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the Lord the Bible says being made a cause for us for it is written in the law of Moses that cost is every man that hangs upon the tree why that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles what is the blessing of Abraham I've taught it here justification by faith the blessing of Abraham is not a pronouncement no there are blessings of Abraham there is the blessing and there is the blessing of Abraham three of them are not the same the blessing of Abraham is the justification that comes by faith the blessings of Abraham are the speakings that came upon Abraham as an inheritance by God that we can route through the promise the blessing is the Holy Spirit are we together so the Bible says that the blessing of Abraham justification by faith might come upon the Gentiles to give us now access to receive the promise of the Spirit by faith so we receive the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the representation of the life of God he is the one we call Zoe now listen very carefully the word eternal life is not something the Holy Spirit brings it is his presence in us the Holy Spirit does not bring eternal life the Holy Spirit is the life of God he is what we call Zoe he is what we call the blessing Are we together now watch this this man let me come back to our, our terms now as we used this man has been convicted of the Holy Spirit and a preacher makes what we know to be an altar call this gentleman comes out receives the life of God acknowledges Christ as his Savior and Lord and according to the authority of Scripture the Bible says this man is saved because he believed in his heart unto righteousness and he confessed with his mouth the Lordship of Christ step one everybody says step one this is not the end of the journey he has now entered into the kingdom he has had one key the key to the kingdom Jesus Christ now that he's in the kingdom watch this this man can remain unfruitful forever right now in the kingdom he's no longer a natural man but he's also not a spiritual man 
the Bible calls them carnal men. The word carnal means sensual. They have not grown to the level now where their impulses are aligned to the word and the spirit. He's not a natural man, but he's not yet a spiritual man in experience. Are we together? Now, many believers can remain at this level forever and be in church for 10 years and in honor to your longevity in church, you can be called a deacon. From a deacon, you move to a pastor and then to whatever. Now, humanly speaking, you are making advancement, but spiritually speaking, you are still here. Are we together? Now, watch this. It is for this man that Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 10 to 12 was given. That he gave unto some apostles. Listen now. The fourfold or fivefold as we call it is about to be introduced now. He gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? To do the work of the ministry. I mean for the perfecting or the equipping, the maturing it is called of the saints. So that this man now matured will do the work of the ministry. Are we together? So the Holy Spirit is the next person to be introduced to this man because the word of God without the ministry of the Holy Spirit will turn this man to a religious man. He will receive the knowledge that puffs up, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. The Bible says, for from such depart. Are you following me tonight? So this gentleman gets born again. The, the sequence of spiritual growth is that for his health look up please for this man's health and his speed in growth it is important to be planted within a community of believers because being planted within the community of believers now will afford him the opportunity to be discipled an interesting word i'm introducing now say discipleship please shout it say discipleship it's a word that has been abused by religious um religious perceptions most of what we call discipleship in the body of christ is conformity to the doctrines and the patterns of a denomination but god's idea of discipleship is not conformity just to the patterns and the doctrines of a denomination or conformity to the central thought agreed upon by a body of religious people that's what most times we call discipleship. It's the reason why after many years of mentorship, the people don't look like Christ. They look like the error. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. The Bible says, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He started it. He should end it. So this gentleman is planted in a ministry like Koinonia. Are we together? Now he has an assignment. His assignment is to remain open and to know that now he must grow. That growth is a possibility in the kingdom. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. This guy is saved, but he needs to grow. If he does not grow, then Galatians chapter 4 becomes his tragedy. Are we together? He says, This I say then, an heir, for as long as he's a child, differeth not from a slave, although he be lord of all, but that he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed. So an heir, provided he remains a child, bankrupt of the knowledge that provides growth, that he does not differ from a slave. This gentleman's next port of call, is to grow everybody say growth the growth is threefold number one the first dimension of growth for this gentleman is to be brought to a point where the foundational pillars the foundational pillars of the Christian faith are taught him I'm showing you how this person will become a powerful man tomorrow the foundational pillars the Bible begins to tell us in, in Hebrews chapter 6 that leaving these basic doctrines, let us move further to more superior things, paraphrasing. And he said the doctrine of baptism and of this and of that and of that. There are basic foundational pillars 
of the Christian faith. Please look up. If this guy receives the best of mentorship, he should be introduced, number one, to the value of the word of God in the life of the believer. This is key. It's not something he should learn later. He should learn that in this kingdom, the boundaries of God's commitment to us is scripture. He must learn that the primary way of knowing God is scripture. All scripture were inspired by the Holy Ghost, profitable for reproof, for doctrine, for correction, that the man of God may be mature, fruitful in every good work. Are we together? So this man must be brought to a point where he understands the value of the word of God. Number two, this man must be brought to a point where he understands the foundational value of the priesthood ministry of the believer. The priesthood ministry is not something he should learn when he's ordained into ministry. By priesthood, he should be able to understand the power of prayer as a system that transforms you and as a system that helps you to legislate in this kingdom. When this man is not taught prayer early, it will affect him. Are you seeing the sequence of growth? Number three, this man must be taught the value of corporate fellowship and community life as a system for preserving kingdom values. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Are we together? It is like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron down to his beard, to his skirt, his garment. He said, there the Lord had commanded the blessing. This man must be introduced to the foundation of corporate fellowship. Number four, this man must be introduced to an understanding of his identity in Christ. It matters for this man to know who he has now become in Christ. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, it says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. There are many things that the Bible calls the believer. For instance, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God is a name he must know number two the Bible tells us that we have been raised up together with Christ are we together he must understand that fact number three he must know now that he has become a partaker of the spirit whereby we cry Abba father that this man has access to God according to Hebrews he says let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and help in time of need this man must know he has access to the wisdom of the spirit now he has access to fellowship he should understand this as a foundational pillar of his spiritual growth he must see the necessity of the fivefold ministry in his life as gifts given to the body to help mature him the next thing is this man must understand that he has a purpose and a destiny in christ it's a foundational understanding it's not something he should have when he graduates from school or gets married no the bible talks about believers being predestined according to his eternal counsel he must know that he was born for a reason are we together when this gentleman you are, this guy is stooping down to respect me his back will pain him oh stand, stand straight eh? he respects me and he's leaning like this god bless you for your honor that's how the world will bow before you eh? now watch this but, but you can you can stand you have you have tried let's 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 be fair on the gentleman praise the lord now do you know that when this guy now understands these things there are very strong pillars 
now he can begin to move to the deeper matters of the kingdom are we together what we call the mysteries of the kingdom he will now begin to understand the methodologies the ways of god he now begins to understand the keys of the kingdom he now begins to understand the mysteries that connect to the results that he desires already remember that the foundation of his life is god remember that he knows who he is in christ because this man is about to go through challenges somewhere in his life and if he's not told who he is in christ and the value and the power of prayer and he does not have a system of mentorship that will tell him he's all right this guy will be discouraged soon when you get born again there's usually a bonus for you whether you pray or not things just work you are jumping is to motivate you are we together and you look at believers laboring and you are like ah, ah you mean this thing is this simple it's an encouragement so that whatever comes your way you will know your life is in his hands yes do you know that this gentleman haven't completed this realm will now move to the next realm where he's mentored on the ways of god now i begin to teach this guy on the principles of the kingdom here is where we begin to show him mysteries in the kingdom that there is a mystery that connects longevity there is a mystery that connects exemption how favor works how giving works how the relationship with the holy spirit is built how the anointing grows the necessity for this this guy continues to learn and learn them again while he grows now this content is graduating this guy from a carnal man to become a spiritual man with proper mentorship he will get to a point where he becomes strong and mature his convictions are strong he's not only believing because a pastor said a prophet said an apostle said he has come into an a, a conviction about god watch this when he gets to this level the next assignment is for him to now be taught the principles that make him a battle axe thou art my battle axe and my weapon of war that you are not only in the spirit to grow alone are we together now that is time for you to mature and now become useful this is where you need to now understand the principles of kingdom advance what it means to become an ambassador what it means to be mightily used by god it is at this point this man begins to learn the laws of influence this man begins to understand the deeper dynamics of the power of the holy spirit you see this is how he started as a naive confused christian not knowing his left from his right and with a few months and a few years of proper discipleship look what he has become a mighty battle axe now look at this why are many believers in church for many years the average church has two to three services per week and after many years the believer is still here fighting for appointment fighting for deaconry fighting for eldership fighting for this and that and that and that and that and sometimes the pressure and politics of ministry will make the person to be ordained here as a pastor are we together now a baby about to lead babies he does not know anything about the things of god members say we don't like you and he says i'm not doing ministry again why because he's a baby he's broke and he fetches from church offering and says i will return it later he's a baby he has not seen the value and the excellence of service this guy is persecuted and he says god why me these are the languages of babes he says strong meter for them who are of full age who by reason of use have learned to exercise their senses unto godliness if i turn to god today and say why me is is an embarrassment um is, is, is an embarrassment to his investment in my life not at this level the difference between this man 
and this woman is that at this level you should have gained mastery the things of the kingdom you should not be learning how to walk at this level when you see someone who is you don't put babies on wheelchair but if an adult cannot walk you put him on wheelchair nobody puts a baby on wheelchair and say i said you should walk and you are not walking nobody prays for a baby for a miracle and say rise up and walk it is it is allowed in that realm but when you become an adult and you cannot walk it's an attack listen there are when people say they are matured as believers ask them what makes you think you are mature say i'm not a baby christian at all i'm not why what makes you believe say i've suffered in this life no that's not the reason why you are you are a mature christian not at all it is true that the fullness don't get me wrong please understand this it is true that the fullness of affliction can refine but suffering is not the reason why you are a mature christian you may be suffering as a result of ignorant attack that you don't have the knowledge for this person should be able to help this person in a heartbeat this person should be equipped with such spiritual knowledge listen if i come and say pastor i'm in trouble like an encyclopedia should just open which mystery is allocated to solve this man's problem this is the justification for being spiritual when you talk to this person and say um you know the way life is you are supposed to be here not here this person should have at this point had a covenant with god or be connected to strong covenants that even where his or her personal faith fails there should still be a way of routing results otherwise who brought you here who qualified you here are you seeing that a lot of baby christians continue to say they are much at this realm people can start falling in your meetings you don't need to get here right here in fact before you understand one impartation and you will use falling down and say watch Benihin is throwing people me too I'm throwing people we are the same whoever told you please understand what I'm teaching you this is a refresher series that many believers do not understand so the Bible says I will give you pastors after my heart men of God hear me you have an assignment to build people sequentially you must know what they are to become not hope that you are doing the right thing like an architect when an architect is building he does not sit down hoping that I hope the building is coming well he has the master plan already he's only hoping that you get to a point where you are able to understand at this level there is something you can tell god that will make god act in a certain way to this man that he does not yet have it is one lord reach unto all but my brothers and my sisters something you have done a process of growth has brought you to this point there is a level of relationship and intimacy you have with god you cannot fear their fears no you cannot if me and this guy pray he's going to be frustrated we can pray a general church prayer but if he comes to the secret place to pray with me this guy is going to be tired he's going to pray from his realm and he will hear me talk to God in a way that does not make sense it may not even sound scriptural but it is there is a level I will call God names he has not had anywhere it's a name that my experience gave God He can come to the secret place and see me sitting quietly on the ground like a herbalist and say sir let's pray I said that's what I'm doing and he said I I thought prayer is just when you are talking and rolling and I say yes just do what you are taught you are correct only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul only you can satisfy me 
Only you can satisfy my soul Satisfy my soul Only you can satisfy me Only you can satisfy my soul You satisfy my soul Sing it one more time yeah. Only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. Now listen. Don't worry, you can stand back. This is already a refresher course. Many of us are born again. But I tell you why our lives are unfruitful. I can watch you pray for one hour and tell you at least 10 things you have done wrong. As serious as you are praying. I will tell you the parts that will be answered and the part that will not be answered. I will tell you what was unnecessary in the content of your prayer. Now at this point, God will not show you because the goal is not the accuracy of your prayer but the zeal of your prayer. So he will allow the error just pass. There's no need for accuracy. He's cultivating zeal. You can pray and make mistakes. The goal is that you become prayerful. The realm of accuracy is waiting for you in the future. So you will find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense. But the more you pray, the more God is backing it. The idea, it is easier to edit your prayer life when you have received the spirit of prayer and supplication. When you are corrected here, you will be discouraged. When you get here, you will find out that many things you prayed for were already answered in your growth. You were never supposed to pray for them. Growth already answered that prayer request. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. Please sit down. Sit down. There are many people parading themselves as matured Christians. You say, why? You say, I've been born again for 10 years. What does that mean? What does that mean? It is true that longevity, if well utilized, that's time. And if you invested in it spiritually, the Bible says that he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting. But he that sows to the flesh will reap corruption. You can sow to the flesh for many years. It does not mean you reap life. Are we together? This thing I told you is the basic foundation of any believer's Christian life. If you do not know this, you will leave God eventually. Something about the absence. Now imagine that, where, where are you come? Imagine that this guy just got born again. And the next thing he's hearing is a teaching on influence or a teaching on prosperity. This guy is going to fail woefully. Do you know why? Because it is dangerous to be taught prosperity as a carnal man. The flesh will not allow the purity of that message to bless you. The message will fall on lust that is already there. And it will make this guy a dangerously materialistic person. So there is a sequence of growth. Not every topic is relevant to every believer. Imagine that this guy gets born again and his first message is love. And, and life partner and relationship do you know what is going to happen to this guy he's already dead even before the series on relationship is over because I can tell you this guy's prayer life is not going anywhere this guy's life is not going anywhere the awareness that there is a beautiful lady to see and marry would not you think he will pray the way you are praying that you are praying like a madman not when you are aware lady is looking at you no how what if I, I i miss the moment and the flesh is there deceiving you and you are failing programming woeful failure but if this guy is taught that the beginning of his life is god he can be praying like a madman any lady that does not like that demonstration does not like a profitable destiny yes sir There are people today who cannot pray in tongues because they were taught something before tongues. 
and what they were taught corrupted their passion that reckless abandonment let me tell you those days when we started ministry here you would see the ladies including hot cc ladies when it's time to pray they will roll under the anointing from one point to the other they will stand up with the whole the whole paraphernalia rumpled to pieces it matters how we are taught it matters who defines your spiritual value who cultivates your hunger and your appetite for the things of God the keys of the kingdom now I said that because it was important to lay this foundation but in this refresher series my, my goal is really not to touch on these basics now I want to refresh and show us again and I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ remember it's this week and next week I'm praying that what you did not see before may you see it now how do I know I have caught light the results the results show that the light has come if the results cannot show with time then the light never came how do I know how can I trust the content of the information I have? One of the greatest um, concerns and prayer in my life is not to believe a lie. That I should not believe something I hold true and find out after many years that I've been wasting my time believing in a lie. The Bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness. There are things people have believed about prosperity that is punishing them today because the content was wrong. There are things people believe about church and ministry and ministry growth today that is making them languish in failure in spite of the fact that they are anointed. There is a, an exact body of knowledge allocated for the truths that you desire. And I'm going to run through them this week and next week. Can you lay hands on your head and command that in the name of Jesus your understanding is fruitful. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Speak to my mind, be open. Hallelujah. Now, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Let's go back, please. And let's deal with these issues now. Sincerely, it's my prayer in the name of Jesus Christ that we'll hold these keys and we will rise in a way and manner. The mysteries of the kingdom demystify life. They bring you to a point where you see that life is not as complicated as it looks. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Say, I receive it. And whatsoever you bind, the word bind there should not confuse you declare to be improper a particular version says disallow and then it talks about allowing now watch this notice the sequence according to amplify that it is what has been bound in heaven you replicate it in the earth and what has been allowed in heaven you replicate it so the keys are keys that allow you to replicate heaven remember the sequence is that it be done in the earth as it is in heaven it is not going to be done in heaven as it is done in the earth so realities are first finished in the heavenlies and then they are replicated in the earth the keys of the kingdom still amplified psalm 82 let's start from verse 5 still amplified very powerful rendition it says they know not amplified amplified keep amplified there please it says the magistrate and the judges know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness of complacent satisfaction and all the foundations of the earth 
the fundamental principles upon which rest the administration of justice are shaken. Six, I said you are God's since you judge on my behalf as my representatives. Indeed, all of you are children of the Most High. Verse 7, let's shout it together. One to go. But you shall die as men and fall as one of the princes. So, the keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge. The keys of the kingdom are also the keys of knowledge. Specific knowledge that gives us enlightenment and authority. Access to spiritual truth. Access to information. Illumination. These are the keys that make for dominion. So the Bible says there are things that have been permitted to walk in the heavenlies. And there are things that are not permitted to walk in the heavenlies. When you obtain the keys of the kingdom in terms of spiritual knowledge and information, they are the keys that activate and deactivate possibilities in the earth realm. These are the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Please understand, I'm teaching now. They are the keys that activate. There are possibilities, but they must be activated through knowledge. And there are possibilities that can be deactivated. For instance, premature death is a possibility. It can be deactivated. Like you detonate a bomb. Are we together? Long life is a possibility, but it's activated. Delay is a possibility, activated. Speed is a possibility activated mediocrity these are all possibilities in the earth realm and so he says i give you keys that means i give you access to i i will bring a file and run through all the possibilities available to mankind choose the ones to activate and set them ablaze in your life and deactivate all the ones you will find some already activated the average believer when he comes into christ when you are born either by territory or culture or ordinances there are possibilities already activated for you they were activated through covenants they were activated through yokes your assignment is to know the keys of the kingdom like a pilot sitting and say no i off this i off this delaying destiny i off this mediocrity i off this i put on the switch of speed i put on the switch of the anointing why am i a pastor with no members i deactivate it he said i give you the keys of the kingdom please listen very carefully please sit down you will find the possibility of poverty activated and tied there many families to remain so but you come through knowledge and you find out that this is not a possibility in the economy of God and you are shown the key to bring it down and suddenly your life changes and they say are you not someone who is associated with this territory you say no more the keys and I will give you the keys of the kingdom listen the Bible says, speaking to Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes and see. That means from where you are, you can go anywhere, but there is a key that takes you there. You don't need to go somewhere else. From where you are, your location, your territory, notwithstanding, you can rise from there. Please pay attention because what I show you will disarm principalities and powers. What I show you will tame life and you will play life like a chess. People will only look forward to your downfall as a prophecy that has failed already. You are, you are standing with stability. You are not afraid of your results. They came by light. Let me tell you this. Any dimension you step into, not by understanding, you will be afraid of the results. Because the boundaries of the spiritual knowledge that should give you confidence and stability is not there. A car comes to you and you are afraid. What if it spoils? Will another one come? 
but there is a body of knowledge that when you know it gives you stability if God says give the car you will give it number one out of faith but number two out of understanding of not just God alone the economy of the system has been open to you the major assignment of a believer is growth the major assignment of a believer is enlightenment being brought through the power of light to a spiritual dimension where ignorance fades away. Not boastfulness, not arrogance, but you come to a place of stability. I know whom I have believed. Ah. And I am persuaded. See, there are things when you tell me today, it is going to be stupid for me to be worried about. No. like the future of the ministry like what makes you believe that in the next five to ten years the ministry will be standing strong you see fear truly comes because of ignorance There are things I've found in my life like gems. And I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray, dear ones, in the name of Jesus Christ, that the spirit that enlightens, brings light, may that grace open you up to light. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. See, let me tell you, when you talk, there will be mockers. There will be foolish men who think you are a talkative until you see the unlimited power these are keys they are not suggestions they are keys they are backed up by God's integrity they are not backed up by a professor a governor a president a monarch this is God we are talking about here please sit down I feel sad and respectfully speaking I submit to you that I feel sorry for any man in our generation today who ignores access to this body of light he has only signed himself and his generation to a life of pain and tragedy I don't care who and I don't care what arrogance is back of that ignorance there are truths when you ignore it's a generation that pays for it it's not an individual listen you are hearing the things that you are hearing blessed are your ears revelation says for they hear these things the truths that you are hearing are a word that is coming to Jacob and is coming for the sake of Israel when God wants to visit Israel he finds Jacob and sends a word to Jacob and it lightens upon Israel thou will show me the path of light for in your light we see light who can claim to see when God has not shown you light what are you seeing Job 29 and verse 3 Job 29 and verse 3 please let's hurry up let's work together media Job 29 and verse 3 Job is speaking now. When his candle did what? Shined upon where? My head. Not upon my feet. The first assignment of the light of God is not your feet. It's to shine upon your head. To take away that darkness. That vagueness. That assumption. It may be an age-old age -old assumption, but it's still an assumption. A popular assumption is still an assumption and then he says and by his light I walk through darkness that a man can find his way out of light and you find your way and stand in a position where your life becomes a living wonder not that you walk miracles you are one yourself a living miracle your life is a message whether you are preaching or not 
this is what God is making you become and listen to me you don't become it just by wish you are exposed to an organized body of spiritual knowledge understand my choice of words not every spiritual information makes men there must be an organized body of spiritual knowledge allocated for the various dimensions of God that you want to see manifest in your life when you learn this let me see the power let me see the cause let me see the yoke let me see the enchantment let me see the divination let me see the scourging tongues of men and the ill wishes of men that sustains the power to keep you down it no longer exists you will know how cheap darkness is when you stand from a point of spiritual illumination it is true that when the light shines in darkness truly the darkness does not comprehend it where we are right now we have to admit is a product of an inaccurate understanding of the body of knowledge allocated for the results we desire please hear me i'm careful to say this thing because sometimes it looks like pride you hear people prophesy i did this i did this and favor came and for me it's not the testimony do you know what you did and can you do it any result that cannot be reproduced is not a real result you can stumble into results but sustainable results that dumbfound the pride of this arrogant age must come by knowledge apostle you don't understand my situation that's why if you were my shoes no sir i respect your pain but i admit to you your pain is proof of the dominion of darkness let light come and you will watch what happens because every desire that we have there is an allocation an allocation of it based on the word of god and if it is not captured in my life i must admit that there is something i do not know the earlier you admit that there's something you did not know the better for you quickly don't wait till you fail for a long time the moment you start failing stop 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 immediately and say i'm not continuing until i'm sure of what i'm doing that way you will redeem time many people fail for many years they are humbled by life before they have to come back and say okay i didn't get it let me get it now you will thank me for the truths that i share with you you will thank me for the truths that I show you. Hallelujah. Now let's explore some keys of the kingdom. Number one. There's part one and there's part two. The first key is found in Genesis chapter one verse one. Everybody read the first four words. Please shout it as loud as as you can first four words one two read one more time one more time one more time last time now this is the first law when God does not begin a thing it has failed in the beginning of anything is not knowledge in the beginning of anything is not skill in the beginning of anything is not connection in the beginning of anything is God hmm. I am Alpha Omega don't call me to join something you started if I do not begin it my commitment is not there I show you a powerful secret in the beginning of your business god in the beginning of your marriage god in the beginning of your exploits in the beginning of ministry this is a secret that has changed my life anything god does not start he will not back he has to start it as alpha because when he starts it you will use his methods you will not use your method and call on him to back it later our proud world today 
thinks God is only useful for spiritual life. When they want to do business, they take God out. When they want to do ministry, they take God out. Love and relationship, they take God out. Everything, they take God out. But I show you the first four words. Keep it there, please, media. This is the first spiritual law that I want to show you tonight. In the beginning of my life, God. In the beginning of my ministry, not passion, not desire, not assignment consciousness, God. Now the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. I don't see myself, I don't see my achievements. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our voice in praise, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Let's sit down. In the beginning of my marriage or my desire to marry, beauty, you are joking, you will pay for it. The beginning of my desire to marry a macho, handsome guy with a job with NMPC, you will pay for it eventually. In the beginning of my business, intelligence and a well-accredited mentorship, you have are, you are failed already. The first secret to excelling in life is for God to not be a participant, but the alpha of all that you do. Don't call God to participate in an idea that you finish with yourself. You organized it, you chose your life partner, you chose how many children you will give birth to and you say, God, come and bless it. No, God does not work like that. You started your business. You chose your location by yourself. You even bought the first consignment. As soon as it arrived in Nigeria, you say, Lord, here it is. It's yours. It's not his own. You started your ministry, decided where the church will start. You already ordained pastors. You called members. You called everybody and you say, Lord, behold your, 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 your assembly. No, sir. The great know the secret to lifting. They don't move. Moses said, do not send us away from here. We cannot start this journey yo, if your presence will not go with us. We are wasting our time. He didn't say if our weapons don't go with us. He didn't say if our gold. A man that had gold had weapons. Yet he's saying these things are mundane. God, if you will not go with me, please don't send me. How shall they know that we're people that are separated? And God says, you got it. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. The Bible says, for with God, all things, for with God. Not for when you are moving and say, okay, God, why are you leaving me? Oh, yeah, now come and hurry up and join. And then you say, God, come. No, sir. Lord, where are you? If you will not lead, I'm not going. I'm not going. Lord, if you will not lead me in ministry, I'm not going. Is it not written in your Bible that if the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want? No. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He said, I am the vine. Don't be confused. We are together, but you are the branches. You are not the vine. I am the vine. You are connected to me, but you are the branch. He distributes it very clearly. Our dominion is shared dominion. Not dominion that is derived by our own strength. It's a secret that I've worked with in my life. My brothers and my sisters, I have no business going where God is not going. It is not my concern at all. The pressures of life will push you to many things and places where God is not. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. What looks cheap now will be costly when you start paying for it. 
when we're about to start this ministry haven't done everything by the spirit three days before koinonia would start we had done crusades we had been in ministry for a while but before koinonia would start i still went back for a retreat god please one more time are you the one speaking and are you still leading i tell you the truth if god said no that would be the end of it he must lead the way when he leads the way you will follow now thanks be to god who causes us like a blind man how many of you have seen a blind man walking accurately it's not because he can see he's following a man who can see and the man will lead him many people do not know this dimension of god we start things by emotion and then we ask god to join when things begin to backfire and god says no 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 you're on your own start with god in your life and watch your life turn into a sign and a wonder no matter how bad it looks if god says i am there go 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 i remember years ago the things that we now walk in god said so and i said lord if you lead we're going home. and look what god has done and look what he continues to do in the beginning god please return to the place of prioritizing god don't use god let him lead the way many of us only say yes to god if we said yes to it already you just say god just help me confirm no you must be flexible lord is this ministry your will i've been in it for 10 years but talk to me now if it is not you i'm closing it this night many of us our ego will not allow us to be that obedient is god speaking to us in the beginning god let god start your life so whatever happens you can say god please i'm here if god directs you and grants you approval and you get married to a wife and that lady becomes barren two years three years you have a legal right to go to god with your wife stand with god and say lord you are the one that joined us all we came to you you gave us the right to choose but we returned it to you and we say we don't trust ourselves guide our decision and you guided us now the devil is bringing barrenness you put pressure on his integrity and he will have to arise if you call me and you are around maybe a bank somewhere and you say you don't have money and i say pick the bike and come and meet me you told me already you don't have money but i said you should come by the time you come and you cannot pay the bike who will pay for it i ask you to come i must take responsibility for your obedience you will always be afraid to go to god when he did not start with you what will you go and tell god now of course his mess is there but you cannot stand now and say oh god this wife you gave me mm -mm, mm -mm. you were at the beer parlor under the heavy and then on that day you drank unusually and it's from the standpoint of that drunkenness you made a destiny decision and now you have to pay for it of course god is a merciful god and he can restore but the truth is before the restoration comes you'll be paying for it until the word of the lord came the word tried him look at me please don't be too big to allow God start. Don't feel my ego is there. I'm too intelligent. Let church not, not make me a dull person. I'm intelligent. I went to school. Not destiny. Not destiny. You must learn to step back and say, Oh God of heaven, I declare before you sincerely, there is nothing that I know moves God like a broken and a contrite heart let god find a man who is genuinely broken and contrite he will veto whatever is wrong and come 
a broken heart is a real invitation for his presence are we together let me give us one more ah, there are keys so oh. the keys are many you hold them and hang them like a chain a chain of royalty a royal diadem and you move through life you stand by this door you remove one key you open it there are doors you don't just open you break the door so that others can pass too because you can pass and the door will be locked he has broken the gates of brass not opened it broken it and cut the bars of iron in sunder so that others can pass will I pass a door and my child will not pass number two are, are you understanding what I'm teaching you please use this please use this God told me something years ago and said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you in other words if like John you agree to decrease John said in John chapter 3 and verse 31, he says that I may decrease so that you may increase. And I, if I be lifted up, not you, if you are lifted up, you will fall. But if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. When they bow down to Jesus, they also bow down to the donkey that was carrying him. When they put the leaves on the ground for Jesus to walk, his feet never touched the palm. But it was the donkey that carried him. Who told you when you carry Jesus, you fail? It's an honor to let the world see him. It's something I've learned in ministry. It's something I've learned in my life. Sincerely, my desire, I tell you, is not for fame. It's not for power. It's not for money. I desire from the depth of my heart to represent the face of God to a generation to show a generation that it pays to lift the name of the Lord it pays to be passionate over the things of God in a man's lifetime and I remember when God showed me a vision and I saw a generation of men I was standing somewhere no food no water they were crying that whole generation and I came to them, I said, why? They said, you are the reason. And I was afraid to go because a few people were looking for me. And I made up my mind that I will go. If I perish, I perish. As soon as I stepped out, I saw a giant man and he held my hands. He said, let's go. For you to be lifted, all I want is for you. For you to be glorified, for you to be lifted, all I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. When God begins your life, the passion for fame dies, I tell you. The passion to prove a point the celebrity obsession dies at once I want to be known so that I prove to other people I'm not a failure is totally unnecessary provided in your journey is enough evidence of the hand of God I tell you why God does not use many people it's not because they don't pray it's not because they don't fast it's not because they are not holy because the corruption in their heart the dimension of obsession for fame and the some of you as you are looking at me like this if if a drop of anointing comes on your destiny God will not hear you again everybody must bow down to you everybody must kneel down and lie down to greet you and you will keep the person there for everybody to see before you say now you can stand up my, my dear son all this pride that continues to kill men I tell you why many people do not rise there are some of us we have it hidden 
Some of us are boastful and outspoken about it. Others are quiet, but it's still there. Waiting for something to bring it out. That, that, that appetite to outshine is a loss that needs to crumble at his presence. In the beginning, God. And at the end of it, God. If nobody ever sees me today, and all they see is God and his mighty works, sincerely I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you I am satisfied. I am. The things that you see and hear God doing through my life and this ministry, I stand and I bless him for it. But let me tell you this. You ask God, he will tell you. I have no business trying to search for fame, apostle Joshua Selman, the great man of God. Thank God for all of those things. But my brothers and my sisters, I'm wise enough to know that without him, I can do nothing. Get to that point in your life where everything about God is your obsession. Don't use God to get fame. Listen, let me tell you, many people leave God to try to get money and you find out how much have you gotten. How much? You have just gotten trouble all around. When God swears over you to lift you, let any obstacle clear that way because even if you are a believer, it will crush you. When God vows upon a man, listen, if you can make this vow this night and say, Lord, I give up this search for to be known. Now, sometimes it's not demonic. It's because of our background. We came from backgrounds where, and some of us, our cultures, you derive respect from the money, the jeep, the car, the house. The moment that is there, they say, ah, you are a real man. Thank God for culture, but please be born again. Please be born again. Don't just be saved. Be born again. Subscribe to another culture. Let me tell you this. When you hide behind the cross, that is the way the whole world sees you. The secret to your being seen is his being seen. When they see Jesus, they have to see you. My life is a testimony. My brothers and my sisters, hear what I teach you and be wise and rise from this mediocrity in life. It does not start with just intellect. There is a place for all these things. But don't forget these first four words that start your Bible. In the beginning, God. Not in the middle, then God comes. Uh -uh. In the beginning. This is how I run my life. It is God. Oh. Everything I have belongs to Him. You never hear me say, you only hear me say my thing, just in terms of responsibility. But God knows. If He started the beginning, then anything I find there is His own before I came. My house is His own. My cars, His own. The influence, His own. The fame, His own. The anointing, His own. I'm only a steward and I remain a steward forever. And the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I show you why only few people ever rise in a generation. It's not Rema. It's not miracles. You can walk every miracle you know and be shocked that your influence never grows. You can have every revelation you have and move in dimensions of power never seen and be shocked that people receive your miracles and still despise you. Let all the other names fade away. Let that be your prayer. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you. Every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Every other name fade away. Let's sit down. Let's start the second. 
The second is almost a master key, except that it submits to God too. The second is almost a master key. Listen, listen. What I'm about to share with you now will take away worry from your life. This worry about what to eat. This worry about what to wear. This worry about how you will become famous. It will fade completely and live your life. This is a revision series. You may not have gotten it the last time. But please get it now. Success is not pursued. Success is not pursued. Success is not what you look for. You will never find it. Success was designed to come just like fate. Just like fate, comet. You don't pursue fate. Uh -uh. You don't pursue success. Please hear me. Success is what is attracted to you by reason of who you are becoming. Not what you are doing. Who you are becoming. Please understand this spiritual law and stop wasting your time looking for mundane things that will never come. Success is not what you pursue. Seeking success is a cause. Spending your life looking for it is a cause. Are we together? Now, please look up. Let me teach. Um, come, gentlemen. Let me have six or eight gentlemen. Sit down, Pastor Alfon. Sit down. Please come. Sit down. You come quickly so that we we'll save time. Just stand this way. Stand facing me. Space yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. And you stand. Um, my friend, you stand here. Watch this, everybody. Thank you. Now, please watch this. Call all of these people the needs of men. Say the needs of men. One more time, please shout it. Say the needs of men. Call, Sam is looking sharp. Call this financial prosperity. You are all looking sharp, eh? My dear people, you are all looking sharp. Now, watch this. Call this financial prosperity. That's what you are looking for. Are we together? Call this marital peace. Oh, how we need it. Marital peace. Are we together? Call this influence and fame. We need it too. Social media world. We need it a lot. Likes and follows. Call this speed. Are we together? Call this, what do you call this? Favor. Ah, koinonia favor favor and then call this impact now watch this this is me help me starting out my life with zero possibilities zero possibilities now watch this did you know how frustrating it will be for me ladies and gentlemen to start pursuing these things one by one these six only represent the uncountable needs that represents success to men and we think that the way to become successful is to isolate these things one by one and begin to seek them that burden is too much an intelligent God will not design success that way are we together now so when you pursue success it means if you are to spend 120 years on earth you spend 30 years seeking no money is even a lifetime you spend 30 years seeking a wife or a husband another how many years seeking all of these things your lifetime together will not allow you get them this is the cause of the fallen man to seek things one by one jesus rebuked people again and again for seeking things he says the gentiles run after these things they run after they run after but your heavenly father knows that ye have need of it now watch this this is how God designed the kingdom. I pray for you that you will get this once and for all. Now watch this. At this level, notice my prayer. I'm a prayer warrior. Oh God, open the windows of heaven 
finances give me finance oh god a good wife good children i will never give birth to an armed robber i won't give birth to a thief at this level your prayer is valid because there are many things you do not know father grant me favor in the name of jesus lord grant me fame grant me speed and i'm praying and sometimes i'm tempted to leave god to quickly get them now watch this all these guys represent levels everybody say levels they represent dimensions say dimensions for every level i get to designed by god are the possibilities already allocated to gravitate towards my growth at that level so human beings are in versions are we together now there is a version of me that cannot be a millionaire no it is god's law that will stop that version from being a millionaire it's not an attack if i pray to be a millionaire god will answer me by providing the growth that takes me to the realm where that possibility was allocated please understand what i'm teaching you now the challenge with believers is that we stay where we are and we try to use prayer to what are you called impacts now i'm here oh, full of ignorance and pride and yet i want to make benny Hinn's impact and i borrowed the impact for two weeks like a rubber ring what happens it will leave me again anything that does not come to you because of your growth must leave you it will leave as losses it will leave as armed robbers it will leave as thieves forget about the actors there is a law that compels that any level that you any object you get that does not resonate with your growth must leave you it's a law i show you the laws of the kingdom i show you the way we grow now watch this these guys are standing here now gentlemen this is what i want you to do for every step i take forward you to take a step forward are, are we together now watch this i am here and i was invited to come for koinonia a broke confused wearing my smelly cloth all i know is god and i have the the opportunity to sit under a heavy anointing and mentorship and now i am taught certain things watch this as the word of god is shining upon my mind i may not know what i'm doing but i'm taking a step and the things i'm looking for are also taking a step are you seeing that now all at once or this is what will happen step back when i step to your level you step forward are we together now watch this i am here right now and i move forward and these guys come now notice without prayer some results start coming because i grew there now my eye is here and it's good to look far but it's not going to come to your life listen hold on let me teach you something if papa ea adeboye today empties his account this night before 12 noon millions will come back i will tell you why it's not because there are givers it's not because he's a man of god when the money disappears the law of god will send a signal to heaven that this growth level should not have this kind of account reflect the justice system of god must balance that destiny this is what physics has tried to describe a long time ago that there is a system of balance in life it is not a lie please understand this now watch this i sit down here as a confused christian and if i'm not properly mentored i quickly come here and lie down on someone's bmw and just say it is mine if you mean it is yours with the law of process and engaging this you are right but you mean you want it now even if they give you now there is a system design that will take it from you see let me tell you it is why many people never hold on to things sustainably they have balloon success they open up today and shrink back again there were certain things that it would be stupid for me to desire 10 years ago 15 years ago no growth brought it 
So I'm growing. Shakaba Katosia. Praying every day as I'm learning a key, as I'm sowing seeds, as I'm building. Look at what I'm doing. It's moving towards me. Moving towards me. Are you seeing that now? A time will come where everything that I see, come gentlemen, I will be immersed in my possibilities. I can no longer leave them. It will not make a difference again whether I give or don't give financially speaking. I have entered a realm of financial equilibrium where what goes and what comes, it doesn't make a difference. The only thing is just my faith with God. But at this level, when I give, I will know it. I will know something left me. Now watch this. Let me tell you what God is doing to you every week you are coming. You are right here. You may not know what is happening. Listen to me. Please, just be sensitive and pay attention. You may not know what it is that is happening to you. But this is the law of God. Man of God, don't sit back just admiring everybody. While you are praying, you are learning the principles. You are learning leadership. What you are doing is you are walking through life. What you are looking for is also looking for you. What you are looking for is also looking for you. A day will come by the Spirit of God. Hear me please. That day except God is not God. A day will always come. That includes the anointing. Watch this. Call these dimensions of the anointing. My brothers, you cannot stand at this level and want to operate in the anointing and the spirit at this level. No matter what impartation, all this double portion prayer, of course, is just a sincere prayer by well-meaning people. Even the man of God knows it's not double portion that came on that person. It just fell down so that it's just hunger that was imparted to go back to the secret place. This is where Benny Hinn started. And he kept growing. He kept growing. He has to touch everybody here for them to be imparted. And he will be tired from hours of personal ministration. But as he stepped up, he got to a level where his word became his hands. It can reach people and touch them. It doesn't matter where. Now watch this. At this level, the anointing will not move till you play the keyboard, clash the cymbal, charge everywhere, till there is prayer, till the people fast, till their hearts are open. He thinks that's how God operates until he comes higher. You get to a realm where someone can be doubting you and still go under the anointing. He does not believe you. He even hates you, yet he's rising from a wheelchair. So what took him up? For every time you backslide, this is what happens. Every time you are offended and angry, I won't go to church again. I'm tired. This is what you are doing to yourself. Shifting you father sincerely this thing. I'm acting is how destiny works. Let me tell you this business people hear me If you believe that you will imaginarily Stumble into millions just by meeting a business or an investment or become just tumble into it You are joking. It will leave you It is only growth that has the power to keep any possibility So the way we succeed is not what we do it is who we become there is a version of me that should not be inside an aircraft if i enter an aircraft the aircraft will throw me out are we together there is a version of me that should not have a car if i want a car i don't look for a car i grow into the realm where a car was allocated So when I'm here, watch this. In this realm as provided by God, there should be cars and there should be houses. If God says, sow your car and you give it, the realm itself will look for a replacement. It is God's system. There is a level that you stand, you will never have more than 500 members. It doesn't matter how many days you fast, you cannot have it. Your mind and your growth does not allow it. You can stand and be offended. The more you insult a man that has a crowd and say, what is crowd? This is what you are doing to your own results. You are authorizing the realm of the spirit to reject you when those possibilities come near you. But when you stand and grow and say, Lord, what did you show them? 
as the light of God is shining upon your head, you are moving from obscurity, from mediocrity. Please understand what I teach you. This is how the great rise. That's why they are not afraid of their growth. They did not jump. They grew and Jesus increased. Listen, let me tell you this. Forget about poverty and forget about all of these things. I'm not saying don't pay attention to them. Do you know you will grow and not know when this realm, the possibilities there left you? Which tailor will sew my cloth? Oh, you go around looking for a tailor. You will die looking for a tailor. Just grow. The tailor is waiting for the renewed version of you. There is a realm where a tailor has been kept to adorn you. Did Joseph look for the person who will put his garment? Was he not in the prison? The garment maker was waiting for the renewed version of him. There are many things you are praying for now that have been answered already in your growth. Let me get a jeep. What is jeep, my brothers and my sisters? Don't mock the investment of the spirit upon your life. When you know this, anybody that receives a miracle is like the hand of a clock rotating. You start rejoicing because it's the same thing you are hearing. And you know that your turn is coming. See, let me tell you. Come. When you stand at this realm and people begin to pray and say, we know that one day it will go down. This money will go down. The crowd, you see the foolishness of the imagination of weak men. You are not here by luck. The justice of God is what backs the result at this level. The only thing God can do with you is to vet you based on his eternal standard. But as far as these things live in you, it will never go again. The only thing is that your system of accreditation and growth and vetting is not these things. No matter how God punishes you, please hear me, these things will not leave. The only way these things will leave is when you go back. And you cannot undo what you already know. That is the reason why Lucifer, the light bearer, can still make you prophesy, can still make you wealthy. Lucifer, you can go to Satan because he stood in a position as the exalted light bearer of God. And there were possibilities that were tied to his office. When he fell, the possibilities did not go. The knowledge is still with him. Therefore, the results still continue to come. It is true. It is true. There is a version of Jesus that 5,000 men could not come to. Not the baby in the manger. Not the 12-year-old Jesus. Not even the 30 unbaptized Jesus. There was a version of Jesus that creation was waiting for. And the Father told that version, creation, now hear ye this version. Not the version in the tabernacle. Hear me. Everything you are looking for is looking for you. But not this version of you. So once and again, your future keeps coming to you and checking if you are there. And returns back and says, we have not yet seen him. Your future is answering God. So the Bible says creation is waiting. Waiting for the manifest. Creation keeps checking. Are they there? He says they are not yet there. But when you grow, you will grow to a realm where creation will now see the manifestation of the sons of God. Please hear me. There is a version of this ministry that we cannot go to at this level. No. There is a level of grace and power and intelligence and knowledge. The future of this ministry is already waiting. Checking for us and saying Koinonia has not arrived. In that future, Koinonia is not yet there. If we stop here, God will have to make do with what is available. But that's not what would have been. So when we continue to grow, a day will come, this building will start driving us. This building like a living thing we start saying go out go out of this environment and the environment waiting for us will start saying come you are ready there is a way you will grow that the house you are staying now will drive you it must drive you the key is not to start looking for another house the key is to wait you will know you are ready when the house starts driving you 
There are clothes you are wearing today that will run away. You will not give it. You will not sow it, but you will not find it. The same way you could not find the former ones you are wearing. Where were they? Where are they now? The clothes you wore 10 years ago, where is it? You did not pack it in a bag and sold it. Where did it go to? Please understand what I teach you. These are the secrets that the Lord brought to me and gave me rest. I don't chase things. You can stay from your room and like a magnet attract anything from the globe. Provided it is on earth, they will walk like the animals. This was the strategy that brought the animals to the ark of Noah. The animals were in the bush. If Noah went looking for them one by one, he would die there. I show you this from scripture. Noah built the ark. The moment the ark was ready, this law started calling the animals. One by one, they started marching. If animals came to the ark, your money is on earth, but the hand to collect it is not this hand. There is a hand that is trained by the Lord. When you lift it from all over the earth, it will come. Humans, victims to spirits. That's what is happening in the earth. I feel very sad when I see people. They get up and they get up in the morning and they do not know. Listen, they do not know that your body is only an instrument of execution. There is a spirit that is driving you. When you see favor coming to a man, no, there is a spirit that makes it happen. There is an operation. There is an anointing. Are you getting me now? You can just be sitting down and then God will speak to you. Carry 10,000 naira and give a marker. Why didn't God say somebody should give to you? There is something. It's not just that, okay, God has pity. No, 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 no. If you understand this, you will know how easy it is to walk in victory. You don't focus on this physical body. You focus on what spirit and what atmosphere influences it. Because that's what determines the possibilities. There are people who almost never pay for anything. When you are going to buy something, that's when somebody comes and says, do you know I was thinking about you this morning? And you tell the person, I'm not surprised. Because the activity of the Holy Spirit manifesting as different things, favor, the blessing, whatever it is, orchestrate events together for you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? As a pastor, the day the anointing is strong upon your life, that's the day everybody who can help you will not come for the program. You stand and preach your life out and everybody say, Kai, we have seen what, what God is doing through you and uh, Pastor Femi, we really appreciate. Uh, by God's grace, next convention will not forget you, I assure you. And you stand up and go. But someone else, the day he's coming, somebody is about to travel and mysteriously his car may spoil and he'll say, let me attend this program. And he comes and says, God has been asking me to sow into a man. This preacher is that man. You think it just happens? The only thing that grows in a farm without being planted is called what? Everything of worth is planted. Are you getting what I'm saying? Favor does not just come. A ministry does not just grow. Anointing doesn't just come. Revelation doesn't just come. Honor doesn't just come. A man doesn't just become sick. A man doesn't just become healed. Was it not in your Bible? Listen. That the trouble around Daniel's life was the spirit of the Medes and the Persians. Is that not true? It was happening physically through human beings. But it was a spirit. Because it was under the influence of of the 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 medis and the persians it was a spirit that made men to serve idols and now a man came called daniel and he was praying and his prayer was judging those spirits and so they could not influence the king and he made the king like daniel are you getting me now and the king's liking daniel made him to subscribe to the god of daniel and those spirits said, no, we have to find a way of bringing enmity between the king 
and Daniel. So one day you get up and somebody comes. You, you thought a neighbor just entered your house and jammed your head. You and your destiny helper and left. It's not just that a neighbor came. A spirit visited your compound using human vessels. Jammed the head of two people and left all of you together. Are you getting what I'm saying now? A husband and a wife. Lovely people. Romeo and Juliet. The marriage is going well. All of a sudden a spirit lands in that house. And then something happens. A woman who has been minding her business. All of a sudden she looks at a text. And doesn't see it properly. And she thinks that she saw I love you to another woman. She carries it and lands the phone on the man's head. Only to find out that it was maybe to their daughter or a spiritual daughter or something and now enmity starts and a lot of people sit down and say you see uh, just love yourself just manage like that wait and see the part two of that movie the holy spirit i mean the, the demon spirit will come again into the house something will happen that demon spirit will start making that man to fail in his job are you getting the point now he will return back home with the anger of his job that spirit the same spirit will start making the woman angry and be impatient so her impatience is jamming with his failure in the office what does it produce divorce that's the name at the end of it the apostle and the prophet that should rise from that family no longer has parents and the boy who would have loved church who would have been faithful in church is now forced to follow bad gangs you just thought it was a physical acting the body without a spirit is dead every time you see things around your life not working the way god orchestrated don't sit down and discuss get into the place of prayer immediately there is war happening in the heavenlies. There is a clash of spirits. They are claiming your body. Listen. Do you know that when Moses died, watch this. When Michael came to carry the body of Moses, he found Satan too. Satan wanted to use the body of Moses, enter it and resurrect as Moses. Are you getting the point now? Resurrect as Moses and start bringing error to people. And he needed the body desperately. And Michael said, no, no, no. I'm not going to drag with you. The Lord rebuked you. How many people saw your mother in a dream? A spirit carried the face of your innocent mother. Landed it in the dream of her enemy. And she got up and said, I knew it. I knew it. Joshua Selman's mother is a witch. This one, I saw it. The woman came with a knife. How many of our mothers and fathers have been called witches and wizards? And, and this is what many prophets see. And because they do not have discernment. Are you getting the point now? They now say, I saw who, some, this and that and that and that. Is it not in your Bible when a, a, a diviner invokes the supposed spirit of Samuel to prophesy? I refuse any other spirit from influencing my life. I, I, I don't have time for that. I cannot be a victim for the, the failure that is orchestrated. Look at Job. One more scripture to prove this to you. Job, a man who loved God and eschewed evil. But the Bible says a meeting happened between spirits in the heavens. Job was not there. Oh. A man just gets up in the morning and they have concluded a meeting about you. Your children are on the way. Thunder strikes them. You just finished furnishing your house. Thunder strikes it. Your cattle die mysteriously. Notice all the deaths that happened. There was one, one people left to come and testify. Is that a testimony? Job! I'm the only one who is alive. This is what happened. And then the meeting was held again. And he said, let's touch his body. Ah! So a meeting can happen. Watch this. Let's destroy this family. And they conclude it. You snore your way through the morning. Wake up. And that's the last time you know peace in a long time. 
you are a victim your body is only a victim tonight this is the this is the theme of this miracle service let me tell you when these spirits clear out of the way you will be shocked to see the doors that will open for you all of a sudden you who nobody would call you you will receive a call the last time you spoke with that person was five years he did just call you the holy ghost made it happen because there was a spirit that was stopping that call every time they want to think about you a distraction happens and you remain in that suffering and when you come to us men of god we say it's okay don't worry things will change one day go better that, 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 no, no 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 that's why i told you you must insist tonight you must insist you are mighty on your throne two things there are three things that give demon spirits access to people and families i want you to pay attention to what i'm saying three things number one covenants 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 you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne oh sing Oh, fountains of the deep, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. America as a nation, listen, a man can wear the inner wears of a woman, watch this, and be moving on the street, and that man returns back and blessings keep following him a very stupid man but good things are happening in his life let me tell you why it's because of the covenant of the fathers there were people who signed an agreement and said lord we give this nation to you anyone who comes under the umbrella of this nation is authorized to walk in that blessing and so a woman a man can go for plastic surgery to become a woman and yet come out alive in nigeria you try to even just operate somebody's ear and he would die was it the knife that killed him at the doctor so daft let me tell you what our forefathers left with us ready this is what they left they went to mountains valleys regions listen and all kinds of ancestry we can fake it and pretend listen i'm a new creation person i've read the pauline epistles are you getting what i'm saying i understand the grace of god and the new creation realities very well but i know god and i understand his ways are you following me now please come two people very quickly so that i need to no no sit down pastor for me I promise you man come stand here stand here watch this in my example this guy is a thief this guy is a wrong occupant watch this if this is my handkerchief and Ken comes to quickly steal it the moment he hears this my footsteps what will he do he will run away because he's a what thief but if somebody comes and meets promise and say promise give me 10 naira i will give you this handkerchief and promise gives him 10 naira and he gave him the handkerchief is there a contract there is there a covenant there if he sees me coming will he refuse because you see the realm of the spirit is a legal realm are you getting what i'm saying now so our forefathers went to idols and they said protect our wives make the plants bring crops for us in response we will hold festivals every time in response we will donate children to you in response they, it was not their fault they did it because christianity had not come to nigeria now watch this when samuel ajayi crowder and many other christians came they brought the gospel of salvation not the mysteries of the kingdom are you getting me they brought the gospel and we salute them but that was not enough 
the understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom that would bring liberty was not taught so even they themselves died i traveled to we were in gombe one time gombe state and we're going to yerima's village to go and greet his family and on our way there there was a rock like a cap and they were telling us a story there that the people used to live there that that rock used to open physically there was an invocation that would be made on it and it would open and people would enter inside the rock and hide during times of war and this is what they said the last person to enter you are the one that is donated to that rock the last person to come out you are also donated to the rock are we together now and that rock has been faithful has been what the same way our forefathers had bumper harvest even where there was no rain mysteriously the crops grew these spirits kept their part of the contract all of a sudden some missionaries just found themselves into the village and they said we brought good news and they died in three days the spirit killed them immediately and said you are joking good news of what and then a few people received it and then when they received it they convinced themselves that because they are born again the territory was now changed i watched a documentary brothers and sisters in fiji island fiji island is an island small island but they love god now something happened there were missionaries who came to that place and they so beat the missionaries and oppressed them before the missionaries died they cursed the land they cursed the land and the people and they died and the people thought it did not matter one by one the fish in the river disappeared mysteriously when hunger hits the people from the government down they said something is wrong and god began to reveal to the church around there that look there are there are apostolic activities that must happen in this land if the territory must be cleansed this is what they did they began to pray and then supernaturally they found the grandchildren of the missionaries listen to me they brought the grandchildren of the missionaries to the city they loved them and the children blessed the land and say we release you from the cause of our fathers it's, it's a documentary in less than one week they saw fish crops started growing fiji island changed at once there are so many families that are seated part of the terms of the contract is that if you don't bow down to that idol you will never build a house you will never marry contract sealed now you came that you are born again and you are moving around 35 37 no marriage the other one too is coming when you meet pastors they say no problem are you not born again just believe marriage is going the ones that get married no children mysteriously you are seeing the same patterns happen because covenants are powerful that was the very same principle jesus used to redeem man covenants covenants are you getting what i'm saying now covenants are powerful until they are broken the spirits the custodian of those covenants are authorized to still begin to execute the terms on the of the covenant even on the victims please believe what i'm saying i prayed for too many people i've ministered to too many people i'm not telling you stories i'm telling you what i was free from number two ignorance ignorance authorizes demon spirits to buffet people psalm 82 verse 5 bless you guys thank you they know not neither will they understand they crop in darkness confusion ignorance and as a result the earth is out of course but have i not said verse six year god and all of you are children of the most high he said but you shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes the bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge ignorance ignorance of the mysteries of the kingdom ignorance of the principles of the kingdom ignorance of the keys to true liberty in the spirit number three disobedience 
personal disobedience. Deuteronomy, when you read, I think chapter 28 or so, it shall come to pass, it says, Thou shalt diligently hearken to these things, to do and observe all that I command you this day, that you shall be exalted above all nations, and the blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. Is tied to your obedience. The Bible says, having the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is perfected, when it is complete. Disobedience authorizes the devil to buffet our lives. Don't let anybody lie to you that when you disobey God, nothing happens. No. It's not about God doing it. It's about the laws in the spirit. They will not change. They didn't start with the Old Testament. Those laws predate our dispensation. Are we together now? So tonight, I want you to look at your life very carefully. Especially for those of us who have come. Have you not seen traces of the influence of darkness in one area or the other? That does not mean you are not born again. That does not mean you are not serious with God. But it's time tonight on behalf of you and your family members to rise up and say, no way. I come by the blood. I come to challenge these things. There are many of us who have never received a testimony of any good thing that anybody has done in your life. Somebody buys a recharge card to give you, it disappears physically. That's, that's the extent to which this thing is working against you. Have you seen people like that? A guy tells a lady, I love you, car will jam him two hours later. Just for trying to verbalize that I'm considering marrying you. Car jams him. His friend now comes and says, Tor, since my friend has come, me too, I love you. Something happens. Let me tell you the meaning of that. It puts a stigma on you and your family. Are you getting me now? And they say, these people, there is death. Have you not seen lands? That people bought land to build house why do you think we dedicate properties why do you think we pour oil on land I know a man who bought a property and went there to stroll in the night and receive the slap in the in the in the land true true story because the spirit there does not care whether you paid for it gave him a slap when listen when I was in secondary school we were in a temporal site before they moved us to the, pam the permanent site. That temporal site used to be a hospital. Are you getting the point? Where the place that was like the mortuary was part of the place that was converted to our kitchen. I tell you, many students had encounters with strange beings. You are entering to ease yourself and you will just hear sounds. Sounds that can give you a headache for a long time. I remember our school getting ultimate power. So that we will watch as their own strategy to deliver us from this, this nonsense. Many students were initiated into occultism because of that. But tonight, we come in the name of the Lord, the captain of the army. That this situation in your life must end. I sat back there fighting tears when all the people were sharing their testimonies. A testimony is simply what happens when the Holy Spirit becomes the only influence in a man's life. Any other spirit must create problems. Tonight, daddy, mommy, sisters and brothers, there is need to deal with certain things in our lives. I saw poverty in my family as if we offended God. Coming from a pastor's family didn't change my family background. Your name can be Solomon. You will remain poor until what needs to be addressed be addressed. That's why I told you tonight will be a night of massive deliverance. Listen, as we begin to pray, many of you who are sick will all of a sudden turn and find out that the sickness has gone. Really, when you understand this, you will know what a miracle is. 
a miracle is what happens when the spirit that is causing that ailment departs this is what jesus did to the woman who was bound he looked at her in the spirit and he saw that a spirit had tied her for 18 years and he said woman thou art loose loose he didn't say thou art healed he said thou art loose the moment the spirit left he laid hands on her and straightened the physical body and there she went remember that madman at gathering that was an evangelist in a cave tearing himself into pieces the moment the spirit heard that jesus was coming they were waiting for him at the other side hallelujah mighty on your throne mighty on your throne i'll never forget one time i was praying praying seriously i was in the spirit and i had a vision i saw that there is a tree that is close to and where i stay and i didn't see that tree again i just saw a great beast like like a like a being the tail was a snake the eyes were big like human head imagine this head now like an eye two of them one here one here and the spirit was looking at me with fierce anger and all he told me is so you think you can bring god's people into prosperity and then it left that was it mighty on your throne mighty on your throne that's the reason why every time satan wants to destroy you the devil will now cause you to disrespect that person so your mother may be an anointed woman and you will fight and tear and say over my dead body for you to pray with me and satan will say amen let's go and then the oppression starts because your pride and your arrogance will not allow you to go to the person and say help me tonight we are going to cry to the king of kings i don't know if you came for this miracle service especially for those who are family people here you should never go back the same you see the results of people 4.8 five points they have always had that ability even when they were getting one point it's a spirit that makes that happen don't let anyone fool you you are not so daft human beings were created intelligent when you enter an exam hall and you write nonsense and come out with zero and smile and say it's just because i didn't read well is that really true how many of you watch film twice to explain it you sit down and watch a three hour film once and you can come out and recite that film completely with the hair of the actor's wife and that was you didn't read for it yet you spent six months or five months reading for one course and then at the end of it you come and fail it and get nonsense and you keep convincing yourself it's just that i didn't get it it is the reason why you can read a novel of 1000 pages but a lifetime you can't read half of the bible because there is a spirit stopping you if this was a novel some of us would say take this i will bring it for you next week friday and you will exhaust it but from the day you were born the day you were born till today you have not read up to one third of the bible one time you cried and prayed and fasted and started and three days later remember when you carried your devotional and did balance brought forward you started reading from two weeks back as a sign of repentance after you read it you now threw it away because you cannot help yourself in the flesh it takes the anointing of the spirit that's why he sends carpenters that's why he puts miracle services like this so that you can come under the influence of god's power how about genotype issues ss you get up and find out you are ss or as do you know the bible never mentions the issue of ss or as are you aware of that that thing was a technology that was fabricated by satan to stop people from getting married you see a beautiful lady who has a prophet in her womb to come and then one spirit just brings one one demonic report called ss and they say sorry we can't join you because you are going to kill your children for that devil is a liar in this place tonight i'm challenging you because when we rise we are going to pray the miracles will start as we pray you've got to be angry with yourself and say no enough is enough 
enough is enough we are come to mount zion where there is an innumerable company of angels where there is the blood of sprinkling the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than any covenant that speaketh better things than any ordinance the good news is that jesus has paid the price our job is to enforce that victory are you getting my point we enforce that victory by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom that bring for liberty we are going to pray that that power that has tied our destinies down it must let us go same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me yeah. your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me sing it two more times with faith in your heart same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me Rescue the earth lives in me, lives in me. Jump up on your feet and sing it one more time. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. One more time with faith in your spirit. Say, power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Listen, deliverance, therefore, is a separation is the spiritual process that experientially brings the separation between you and the forces and influences the spirits that attempt to influence your life the legal separation brothers and sisters when that happens to you then you will see gates open by themselves when that happens to you you will see realms of favor all these things people pray on you must challenge those spirits you must challenge those spirits on behalf of yourself and your family and god is ready for us tonight i tell you god is ready for us tonight lift your voice in one minute and bless him for this word the body without a spirit is dead the body without a spirit is dead now i realize that there is a spiritual component to the challenges in my life lift your voice and thank him for this revelation lord i now realize that there is a spirit component to the failure in my family there is a spirit component to the retrogression in my life there is a spirit component to my lack of admission there is a spirit component to my lack of marriage there is a spirit component to the poverty in my family are you praying tonight let a dissatisfaction rise from you
Oh, come on, tonight is your night of liberty. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Just the voices. Sing it from your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. The power that can challenge any altar. The power that can challenge any force of witchcraft. Any generational cause. One more time, sing it. That conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Yeah. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Same power, Same power that conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love, your love, say your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice right now and mention everything you know that is a tragic event in your life and challenge it. Say it must stop tonight. Lift your voice. Oh, come on, Koinonia, you should be praying. A pareke ke patata mandala tata challenge the spirit challenge the spirit behind failures challenge the spirit behind marital delays challenge the spirit Challenge the spirit of death from your family. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. He must let you go tonight. He must let you go tonight. Those outside, I hope you are praying. This is your destiny tonight. <laughs> Spirit, the body without a spirit is dead. Hallelujah. 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 Look up, please. Your failure without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Barrenness without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Are you getting what I'm saying? The key to liberty is to evict the spirit that initiates that thing. For a body without a spirit is dead. Any cause without a spirit backing it is dead. It's null and voice. Any pronouncement, any enchantment without a spirit is dead therefore i want you to lift your voice and i want you to declare forget about the problems lift your voice and speak as a believer that you are to every spirit address it behold i give you power over snakes scorpions Pray. 
Sipara, Sipara, Leketeke Barapa, Go Proto Sekete, Leketeke, Pereta, oh yes, he must leave you tonight. Seteliata, Rekebana Bapana Banaba, Prata Banaba, Ripana Tabako Seketeleponaba, Reketeke, Sapata. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are spirits that will never allow you to walk in the anointing. They will never let your eyes open to see visions. And even when it opens, they will, they will bring you into error. So that everything you see misleads you into trouble. I'd like you to lift your voice again. Just do what I'm asking you to do. From the realm of the heavens, challenge powers, challenge forces. Over your finances. Oh, it must change. It must change. It must change. It must change tonight. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. My goodness, it's a strong anointing in this place. Oh, it must let you go tonight. Who says that breakthrough will not come? Who says that marriage will not come? Who says that cancer cannot die? Who says that HIV cannot live? Maka Kapata. Lift your hands to the heavens. Lift your hands. My goodness. All I see in this room and outside is fire that's all i see fire you will see deliverance tonight like you have never seen this one is the one that will bring your miracle listen as this prayer goes on miracles will start immediately many of you will start getting reports from your body many of you will be open to visions right now Lift your hands. Hallelujah. My goodness, there is such a heavy unction on me. It's for deliverance tonight. It must give way for you to move forward. At the count of three, hear me. Listen, I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. At the top of your voice. It's a prophetic instruction as you shout it fire some of you visions your eyes will be open in the spirit you will see covens catching fire Matalabata, father you told me tonight is a night of deliverance there are families under bondage there are businesses under bondage enough is enough let your fire bring deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, may heaven invade this place. One, two, three. Second, second, second. I command covens. I command altars. I command spirits. Bring them out. Fire! Fire! 
Fire brings deliverance tonight. Barata bariba tire. Iba la Shaka ba 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 ba. Ebrotos tete. Shaka te 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 te. Reke te 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 te. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is showing me a vision. We are going to shout it again. Please don't do it here. I see many people vomiting poison, physical poison. As you shout, physically it will come out. Lift your voice. Bata bata, shaka ta ta ta, mare te 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 pa. Father, anything that has been planted in the body of anyone right now. As you shout, Jesus, we have victory. One, two, three. Shake it, 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 shake it. A protos, mokotos, lekotos, pronto tokete, eriakata. He must let you go. He must let you go. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. My goodness, fire is burning in this place. Fire is burning in this place. Fire is burning in this place. The devil must let you go. The devil must let you go. The devil must let you go. The Lord is giving me a word right now. There are ladies here. There is a spirit that comes to you in the night to oppress you, to sleep with you right now. Lord, where are they? Let that fire, let that fire bring deliverance right now. Right now, right now, right now, every spirit husband, every manifestation, every spirit wife, every devil that has leads to you, it leaves you now, now, right now. It must leave you now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. You see physical snakes. Where is that lady? Physically, physically. It appears to you. Physically. The lady is right here. Please come out. I don't know who that lady is. Physical snake. It appears to you. You see it. Let me tell you something. After this miracle service, you will see advancement in your life in a way that will surprise you. That's when you will know that Satan is not as powerful as he looks. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Any covenant that ties me to anything of the fathers have been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I am a, I'm a new creation, no longer connected to ancestry. Lift your voice and pray. Every altar that connects me to my fathers, every witchcraft that attempts to connect me, no, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We we'll pray for the sick, but there are miracles happening right now. When I call your, your case, just check it and come out here right now. I'm seeing 
I'm seeing a lady, please check it. There's like a growth right here at the side of your breast. Check it right now. You'll find out that it's gone. Check it right now. Right now. And make your way to the front. I see someone having severe pain. Your thigh. Right under here, your thigh. There is severe pain. Severe pain. The Lord is healing that person right now. Please check yourself and make your way to the front. Right now. Check yourself. Make your way to the front. I'm seeing two ladies. You came here with heaviness. There is heaviness on your chest. It's just like something heavy. God is healing people. Can you appreciate Jesus? Hallelujah. There are miracles happening. Make your way to the front now. We'll give you room to testify. Stand here. All the people that are coming out for miracles, just stand here. Right now, there are miracles that are happening. I see someone like your nose. It's like there is an irritation in your nose. While we were praying, you felt like there was fire on it. And now it's lifted. Now it's lifted completely. It's gone right now. Right now. Right now. I'm seeing someone. Severe peptic ulcer. It hooks you. Hooks you very seriously. As we started praying, it just disappeared. Who is that? Make your way to the front right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. I see a lady you hear a voice telling you you will die not a vision a physical voice physical voice it tells you you will die a physical voice physical voice it speaks to you physically can you help me all the please if I don't call anybody's case I'm going to pray for the sick. I'm calling miracles. Cases that have happened. Help me. Um, Aaron, would you help me? Just examine these people and then we'll take a few testimonies. God is giving people miracles. Miracles right now. Miracles right now. Miracles are happening right now. I'm seeing somebody. Listen. There is a growth. You came here with the growth at the back of your neck. Check it now. It has disappeared. Check it now. Now and make your way to the front put your hand there and check it you will find out that that growth is gone completely i'm seeing two holes two holes of a left teeth being healed right now check it you won't find the hole again two holes two holes of your teeth check it right now and make your way to the front my goodness god is doing miracles in this place There are miracles that are happening. Miracles that are happening. I saw this same case in Kaduna this morning. Now, I'm seeing four people. Four people. There is one guy and three ladies. You have pile. Pile. For one of the ladies, when you go to ease yourself, it's as if you are giving birth. Blood comes out. Go and check yourself now. You find out that that pile is gone. Gone back to the devil. Go and check it, please. Please, we are not playing games. Don't sit back. Confirm your miracle and seal it. I know there is a guy. I saw a guy. Pile. Severe pile. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. Tears just start coming out of your eyes. Without any... You are not crying. But it just starts coming out. It's very embarrassing. It starts coming out. Right now, the Lord is healing you. Wherever you are, confirm it and make your way to the front right now. Confirm it and make your, your way to the front right now. Right now. Confirm it and make your way to the front. We'll give all of them room to testify. God is healing people right now. I'm seeing someone with this finger. Look at me. This finger. This very finger. That's what the Lord is showing me. There is a miracle happening on that finger. This very one i don't know if it broke or something happened to it but there is a miracle happening to that finger right now right now i'm hearing a name gabriel 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 who is gabriel 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 the lord is bringing a a miracle for gabriel gabriel i've been fighting this name but let me bring it out i'm hearing a name asabe 
I don't know if it's a woman or somebody in a family. Asabe. Asabe, I'm hearing that name. Who is Asabe? Please confirm. Make sure you confirm it. Let's not. Huh? You are Asabe? Uh, but I'm seeing another person again. No. Eh? This, you are Asabe. Please stand here. Miracles everywhere. Come, tell us. Very quickly, come, come. Please help us. Give Aaron. Let's let's coordinate them. Okay, come, sir. Let's just listen to this. Give them the mic, Lawrence. Just testify. Tell us. Look at the crowd. Straight to the point. What happened to you? What is the miracle? Praise the Lord. I am the girl who the man of God prophesied. I have an irritation in my nose since 2012. 2012. Yes. And now what happened? Every day, once I put my hand, I, I always notice blood coming out. But now, I felt something drop out of my nose. That devil leaves you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. Give Jesus praise. God is doing miracles here. All kinds of miracles are happening in this place. Please, the next people, let's have them come very quickly. Just turn and let's testify. Don't look at me. Look at the crowd. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I have this bonus While we are patient. talking, there is a lady who will come patient. strongly under the anointing outside. Please pick that lady and bring her. Hallelujah. As we are talking, the power of God is, in fact, two ladies. Two ladies outside, mightily by the anointing. Please pick them and bring them. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. On my left thigh, I have this burning sensation. I don't even know what cause, but I know that once it starts, it burns me as if I'm sitting on fire. Okay. But now it's gone. And since last hearing this voice saying I will die, even when I was coming last week, I had this fear that I was going to... But right now, it's gone. completely gone. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. Yes, please. Check yourself. If you see a miracle, you can come out. We are going to pray for the sick, but we want to take testimonies. We'll give you an opportunity to tell us what God is doing. Mama, please stand up. Please don't let Mama sit down for God's sake. Give her a chair. Mama should not be kneeling down. Praise the yes, Lord. Yes, please. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest, but now I feel very... Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any pain? Is there any pain? Is there any pain? Give Jesus praise. Yes, please. Praise God. While he was preaching, I was having peptic ulcer. So peptic ulcer. Out, but while we started praying, it left me. And There's I'm one more outside. Go and carry her. It left me immediately. Now I'm not feeling it again. No pain again. Give Jesus praise. Yes, ma'am. Praise the, praise the Lord. I used to have this heavy pain on my chest since 2002. But um, when I went to see the doctor, they said it was pneumonia. It's, sometimes I can't breathe. Pneumonia. The pastor said I should, we should shout Jesus. I can't breathe. I can't shout too much. But the moment I shout Jesus, I fell on the floor. Everything just left you. No pain again. Praise the Let Lord. Let me pray for you. It never returns to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with an eye problem. I don't know what the eye problem is, but it's living right now. Please confirm yourself. Eye problem. Check it. Check it. We are not playing games. Please check it. Check it. Eye problems. I'm seeing a miracle happening right now. Eye problem. Confirm it and come out right now. I'm seeing this at least 10 people with this case. At least 10 like the lower abdominal region right here. You've been having se severe pain. It's like something pulls you there. Check it right now. You'll find out that you receive a miracle. At least 10 people. Please make your way to the front. At least 10 people. Check it right now. God is doing a miracle. Don't sit back. Inside and outside. Lower abdominal region. Lower abdominal region. That miracle is happening right now. Right now. Right now. At least 10 people. 10 people with that pain. As soon as you check it, make your way to the front. Celebrate Jesus. God is healing them. They are coming. They are coming. All of you, you can come and stand here. The moment you receive a miracle, please stand here. They will confirm you. At least 10 ladies. Right at this lower abdominal region. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a gentleman. You came here with a throat condition. In fact, um, let me just describe to you. They are telling you they want to take you somewhere to cut the throat. 
it's like there is an elongation some i'm seeing them saying they want to use is it knife or something and cut something that uh, an elongation who is that person the lord is healing you right now right now you can't swallow things you always feel like it's like bone but it's like there is something on your throat almost perpetually right now check it check it check it completely the power of god is coming upon you there is a lady god is healing your mother but the power of god will come upon you as a witness to that lord where is that lady right now where is that lady identify her oh god by the power of god right now right now right now please bring the lady out god is healing her mother right at home and god is using what is happening as as a point of contact as a point of contact i'm still seeing breast lump disappearing like a lump i'm seeing one on the left left side please check it check it when you receive a miracle testimony is one way to seal it and keep it the lord is showing me three ladies your hair falls every time you go to comb your hair you literally comb your hair and bring out a copious amount of your hair that is removing this thing is a serious thing you have used medication and it has not stopped a miracle is coming to those people right now a miracle is coming to those people yes let's take the testimony quickly please loud and straight to the point Praise the Lord. help I us sound please can you help us with this mic i used to have this pen down my tomac here but now i'm, I'm not feeling completely okay. gone yes are you sure yes. how long has it been Please. come on koinonia let's not get too used to miracles in this place hallelujah it never returns to you in the name of jesus christ the next person please my goodness look at what god is doing god is giving people miracles go ahead my own is like i'm pregnant it's come like pain as in i'm pregnant and i've been complaining that for months but today when the prayer was going on i felt relieved and my stomach in fact open. as she was talking hold on the lord opened my eyes there is a lady your stomach is already swelling this is almost is even beginning to embarrass you it's not just like a stomach protruding you are feeling it very hard and stiff um it's you are afraid because it's looking like it's a situation of a fibroid please check it right now god is giving you a miracle god is giving you a miracle god bless you bless you quickly when they say we should shout praise the Lord, so i now shout the stomach used to pay me even before i come to zaria but i can't feel it again. Completely gone. Yes. give jesus praise it never returns again yes please praise the lord um recently i started having this eye pain when i'm walking doing other things one of the eye get blank and i don't see again but now and after the prayers i feel one sharp pain and i saw this abdominal pain almost all the time but it just left me immediately give jesus praise it never returns to you again in the name of jesus glory be to jesus christ this abdominal pain starts two days ago so i came here and when i was praying i just received total deliverance and complete deliverance please help them so that they don't fall on, on praise the lord the abdominal pain normally comes and go and when i was outside i was still feeling my stomach hooking such that i could not stand well i was bending and then when the man of god spoke i got up and stretched and to the glory completely of the lord, no pain again come on give jesus praise give jesus praise the lord mine is more of um creativity ideas that god is to give me every day when i'm in my quiet time and it's it happens that every time i try to push further i realize that there are a lot of setbacks distractions and uh, confusions that comes my way and right now but what has right happened? now when at the mention of the name jesus i felt my body on fire I can't really understand what was going on. On fire, a restoration yes, of that creativity yes, comes, comes to you yes, in the sir. name of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I came here with a severe eye eating. At a shout of Jesus, everything just wiped out. Completely. Believe me, that name works. 
Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a medical report from Shika concerning pain in the pain. joint. You went to the hospital. Yeah. What did they say is wrong with you? They, did, they couldn't see anything. They couldn't see anything. Yeah. Okay. And when you were praying, you prophesied that there is a uh, ten people here that that God is working on yes. their system. And, and now what has happened to you? The pain is gone. The pain is completely Even gone. Give Jesus praise. Even the medical report is in my room. The medical report is in your room. Yeah. You go and check yourself and you find out. All of you that were under the anointing, when you get up, don't just go back to your seat. Check. You will find out that all kinds of things have happened. You are not just falling for nothing. Praise the Lord. Praise the, praise the Lord. I'm trusting God for a new set of dentition. My teeth are just... Go ahead. <laughs> the power of God is on her. Oh, Father, complete what you have started in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. Because your faith can receive it, let it have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. After we take this trip, people, and, um, it's okay. Um, there's okay. this pain that I usually used to have by, um, from under my armpit to the left side of my breast. Okay. So when um, you mentioned the case, I was not too sure if I was the one. But later, you specify by saying the, your left side of your breast. I notice like it's swelling up and sometimes I very I feel like very, a swelling there. Yeah. And feel, now, have you checked it? Yes. I, Is there I, anything I there? Okay Completely gone. Come on, give Jesus praise. It never returns again in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for the spirit of fear as in I do get scared a lot but I now I'm free in the name the of The spirit of fear. Come. It never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Yes, Praise please. the Lord. I want, to, I want to thank God for healing me from the lower abdomen. I used to have this pain right from child. When, when, I was, when I was young, I used to have this pain. But when you were praying and you asked us to shout Jesus, I, I feel relieved. I just Completely. want to thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know. Sometimes second of August, this very month, this is my middle finger. Help her. Fire is landing on people. I started having pain around this region, affecting this finger mostly. I can barely use it, but since he prayed during the miracle session, I got healed. I announced, I saw I've been that shaking, a baby, a finger. I've been shaking it and no I've pain now. Come on, no give pain. Jesus praise, everybody. Praise. Where are the two ladies, Asabe, that I called? I called some two ladies, Asabe. The Lord is changing the story of your family. This Mama is Asabe. Huh? Please, you should not stress, Mama. If she's if she's out because she's sick, Mama Kizona Zah make you a Please, you people should not stress this old woman. If she should even when she's coming out, carry her with the chair and just keep her here. We'll pray for her. Please. The Lord is, is wiping the tears in your family. You believe that? When a word comes like this, it comes to give you liberty. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I end this oppression in this family right now. It goes forever in the name of Jesus. Who has an elder brother? Who has an elder brother? Yes. Do, you, do you have an elder brother? Yes. What is he doing? He's a carpenter. He's a carpenter? Yes. The person I'm, I'm talking about didn't go to school, though. Is your brother? Yes. Where is he? He's in the village. He's in the village. God is going to lift him. What is this thing that I'm seeing them <laughs> laughing at him and they are saying it? It's not his fault that he didn't go to school. Even you, is by the grace of God that you are here. It's not like maybe yes. it's that your, your people are sponsoring you and all of that. It's the favor of God. Yes. But God, as a sign, go and tell him, call him after Koinonia. That the Lord said is going to connect him to a rich man. He should be faithful to that man. Amen. That man will bless him. Amen. Father, let there be breakthrough in this family. In the name of Jesus. Asabe. Gabriel. Oh, your name is Gabriel. Your name too is Gabriel, sir. Who is Titi Lyo? Titi Lyo. I'm hearing a name, Titi Lyo. Please let's save time. Our time is gone. Um, we still have to pray for the sick. 
Titi Lyo. I'm hearing the name Titi Lyo. Titi Lyo. Who is working here, sir? You're, you're working. You're both working. Okay. I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing. The Lord is. Sir, it won't be too long. You are leaving Gusau. We spoke, at least we spoke. That one is not word of knowledge. We, we spoke about it, but it won't be too long. The Lord is lifting you to another place. Go and write it down. This will happen to you. It won't be too long. Write it down. You will come back and testify before them. It's not a disadvantage. It's something that will bless you in no small way. Because you have come with your heart open. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I lay my hands, I pray. Right now. That you bring your word to pass concerning his life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hear breakthrough for you, sir. This is what I hear. The Lord is saying I should announce breakthrough to you. Father, I hold his hands and I announce breakthrough in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Your mother is sick. What's wrong with her? She has been bleeding for the past one year. Bleeding? You, you can see the kind of demonic thing we are talking about here. Huh? Your mother bleeding for one year non-stop. How about that? And you fell under the anointing. No, sir. You are just standing to agree yes, for her. Okay, no problem. We have a session for that. But since you came out, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Look at me. Do you believe God will touch your mother? Where is she? At home. Where is home? Taraba. Taraba State. Yes, sir. You are from Taraba. Yes, sir. Lord, show Mama mercy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. As it touches you, it touches her. Please don't just come out at will. Ah, you are related to her. Your sister is Titi Lyon. Yes, sir. Where is she? She's in Kaduna. What's she doing? She's schooling at Kaduna. She's schooling. Okay, let's pray for her. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what are you doing? You. I'm a student, sir. Where? KPSS. Eh? Knowledge is power. Secondary school. Okay, knowledge is power. Yes, sir. Your sister is where? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Tell her. Is she married? No, sir. Tell her marriage is coming for her. Are you hearing me? You believe it? Because she has been praying about this. Your mother, where's your mother? Your mother has been joining her to pray. Yes, your sir. mother even went to a man of God and they prayed about yes. this thing. Is that true? Your mother went to a man of God to pray. Go and tell her that the Lord is saying marriage comes for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is an awesome God he raised. Hallelujah. Now, please is the time to minister specially to sick people you know the nature of our programs here we will need a lot of time so if you are not sick if you are escorting somebody please just bring the person and go back and once they pray for you don't wait for another prayer one touch is okay some of you when they pray for you you refuse you still stand back please once they pray for you just check yourself and go back praise the lord and then don't keep going back and coming out and saying you are doing this and that. If you came with somebody who is sick, now is the time to bring them out while we are praying. Please arrange them. Now is Mama's time. All, this, all our mothers, they can make their way now. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with the way for them. Clear the way for sick people. Those under the anointing, just, just carry them and keep them gently somewhere. hallelujah now let's save time while we are praying for the sick all of you begin to submit your prayer request please 
I permit you to put on your phone. If you need to call your loved ones to send you prayer requests, call them. Because what God is doing tonight is unusual. Call them and tell them there's fire upon this place. They should submit their prayer requests. Ushers, please begin to go around. Those online, those who are connecting with us through the internet, they can also connect by faith as we trust God for miracles. Worship team, please get set. You'll be giving us powerful worship songs. We'll just pray for our elderly ones. Let the Lord touch them and then he will give us peace. Please and please, um, when we pray for you, you clear the way. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. Awesome is your name. You do mighty You do glorious You do glorious things. You Awesome is your name. May God use you to wipe the tears of your parents. Listen, let me tell you, any child, hear me, I'm saying this especially to we young people, any child that makes himself an instrument of pain to your mother, do you know you bring a curse upon your life when you do that? Whatever spirit is bringing hardship on our mother and making her children not to succeed the way it should, Pray for her children in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well done, sir. Please sit down. Your dad. Welcome, sir. Straight, straight to the point. Legs are swollen because it's been long. I saw him. He's been, he doesn't breathe well, and at the same time, he's having problem with mama. None of his children look at him except me. The same problem that mama is having, like faithful. It's just similar thing. We are eight. <laughs> oh, it's paining you, sir. We are going to pray for you right now, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards our daddy. Please participate in the service. That's why you came. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Daddy, sit down. Please sit down. sit down. Please, let's stretch our hands. 25 years of witchcraft. This is witchcraft. This is not sickness. 25 years of wickedness and oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be deliverance, oh God. Baba, I'm going to pray for you. Well, we are praying for you now. Jesus Christ is going to touch you. Father, let Baba return with a testimony. I lay my hands in the name of Jesus and I cancel the plague of witchcraft in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, after today, check him and don't cry. Don't cry, eh? Clean your tears. Clean your tears. Baba, they will watch you and they will see the improvement and you will let us know. Since it's not something we can check, you are already walking in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will come here right now. As I lay my hands upon you, I want you to believe. We all came here because we trust Jesus Christ and there will be a miracle. Those of you who are sitting down, be connecting to the healing anointing, you are the one who will be doing this. The goal is not for one person to do this. That as you are watching, something will come upon you. you do Thank you, Jesus. Things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do my things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're our God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. 
look at a very serious situation. Can you flash this, this baby? Look at, can you believe? Listen, can you believe for God's sake that this baby, as beautiful as this child is, the brain is not developing? Look at this. Who told you the brain is not developing? The doctor, and we've done CT scan. You've done CT scan. You have your evidence. They said the brain is not developing. Remember, remember our teaching. A body without a spirit. There must be a spirit that is stopping this brain. How can a baby like this? This is an apostle. This is a prophet. This is a great man. Oh, what male or female? Male. Male. Man of God in the making. And a spirit come. How will you like to have a child? That do you know what it means for the brain not to develop? That child becomes like an imbecile forever. In the name that is above all names, we lay hands upon this child. We are not only praying that God will heal him, but God will use him. My God, I pray right now. Let the brain begin to develop. We cause the spirit that is responsible for this wickedness. Right now, in the name of Jesus. from village. I go a lecture. I will charm from village. Look at this. Mama went for a lecture. They fired something upon her head. Now she's mad. Is she mad? Is she your dog now? Yes. You are mad. No, you are. You are not mad in the name of Jesus. Say I'm not mad. I'm not mad. In the name of Jesus. Whoever organized that charm on your head, it returns back to them sevenfold. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mama, I'm praying for you right now. Every charm, every enchantment, you came to this place tonight. It ends in the name of Jesus. You are her daughter. You are her daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even as it releases your mother, it releases you. Mama, you are free. In the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Accident, sir. Accident. Yes, sir. This guy, for a long time, the spirit of death has been following you. Eh? come do you know why the spirit of death is disturbing you i'm looking at you don't feel embarrassed eh i'm looking at you but i'm seeing you smoking something eh tell me the truth don't tell lies. this 
what death would have killed you. You are smoking a uh, uh, what do they call this thing? Eh? Indian ham. You go. Yes, sir. Is that not true? Yes, sir. You are smoking. The devil wants to kill you. This is look at look at this. Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. Because this is not the first time. Every time I see this guy, I see a whirlwind on his head. You, you know that the devil is after your life. You are now adding ego to it. Jesus came that you will be saved. Are you getting me? You are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. Genuinely. Eh? Oh, oh, you are, oh, you are still with those, your friends. Yes, sir. You are still with those, your friends. Yes, sir. We cancel those relationships right now. Amen. I'm seeing you sitting down with a group of people. Yes. They are smoking and they are giving you to smoke, but you are saying you have repented yes, and they are even laughing at you. Yes, you have to leave them. We cancel that relationship in Jesus' name. The Bible, hear me. Don't say I'm not doing it, but I'm sitting down where others are doing it. The Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day and night. I curse that madness in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for supernatural healing. Look at me. Look at me. Lift your hands. Forget about the wound. Lift it up. Careful. You broke the hand. Oh, it can't lift. Oh, I see. No, no, no. If it can't lift, don't, don't harm yourself. I thought you broke your bone. That's why I was asking you to lift it. Father, let there be a miracle right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. And anybody who smokes it go in this place. If you know you smoke it go or codeine altar. once i make the altar call just run and come and kneel down here because tonight is your night of salvation please don't play games with your destiny anything you smoke anything you drink that is outside the jurisdiction of decency the moment there's time for altar call please make your way here we love you but then the lord wants to touch you let's hurry up because our time is gone your name is out
up on your feet. I'm going to be praying on the request right now. At the same time, an altar call is called. An altar call will be going. Those who need Jesus Christ, you are here right now, inside and outside. There are some of our brothers who are smokers and ladies. The ones that I spoke to. Now is the time. You can come before the presence of God. Don't feel bad. We're a family. And any other person. There are those who are saying, Lord, I'm tired of the way my life is. I need a new beginning. As we pray, please come and wait here. Join this lady very quickly. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. Please, let's save time. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. God bless you. A new beginning. God is giving you a new beginning. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You are saying, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to walk with you. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? God is saving sinners. Keep coming from outside. Please clear the way for them if they are coming. Salvation is a very serious issue. Clear the way for them so that they'll come. Don't let any devil stop you. You are welcome. I know we're out of time. But please make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. We love you. No man condemns you. He can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. I want you to know that His Majesty can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. I'm tired of the way my life is. I surrender everything to you. Seriously and completely. From this night, take over my life be my Lord and Savior let your life come upon me I break free from habits from sins and everything that destroys my life from today I'm a child of God I am saved in the name of Jesus let me pray for you Lord I thank you for these ones unashamedly they have come before you preserve them by your power in the name of the Lord Jesus I pray that you will use them mightily in the name of Jesus I break the power of sin over your life you will never return especially for those of you who are victims of addictions and smoking you will never return to it again in the name of Jesus Christ that power is broken from off your life in the name of Jesus Christ now I want you to follow a gentleman they will have your details and then on Tuesday unfailingly please be around um, meet with the prayer department and um, will fire you up. You'll be with them for at least a month. They will guide you. The gentleman is waving his hand. Salute them, everybody. Congratulate them. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request in one minute. Please, everybody, rise. We're rounding up. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request. Your request is here. Begin to speak. Prophesy. Prophesy over it in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy over it. prophesy over it Lord unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come are you praying Lord do miracles every spirit that is responsible for the troubles that are written here we judge that spirit every spirit every covenant every influence makata lato desetebe Manda prendo so so prida bala da bas caprati gede bele de bos. Prato so prete kete bele de bos. Every spirit responsible for barrenness here, yeah. responsible for any setback. In the name of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus, we challenge it. Lord, let your people have testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare that every request, every request that is presented here is turned into a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
and you will stand to testify before the people of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Now lift your hands and receive the prophecy. I decree and I declare over you, every confusion in your life, every cry for direction, right now in the name of Jesus, may you receive direction for the next level of your life. Receive direction for the next level of your life. Receive direction for the next level of your life. Every area of confusion, I arrest it right now. You will hear a voice from behind telling you this is the way. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those who are students, I pray for your academics. The exams that are about to come your best result in your various institutions this exam is what will produce it in the name of the lord jesus christ may you record five points in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for every family represented here whatever has stagnated your family by this anointing i declare move forward move forward move forward in the name of jesus christ everything that has covered your glory so that the glory of the lord upon your life will not be seen in the name of jesus we tear that veil off we tear that veil off by the power of the holy spirit whoever needs to help you before next miracle service i call them forth into your life mysterious helpers mysterious helpers in the name of jesus christ i pray for you fresh grace for prayer fresh anointing for prayer every lack of passion for the things of god i kill it right now in the name of jesus every carnality and flesh and wordlessness and prayerlessness that is eating up your life it dies a natural death here tonight in the name of jesus christ i pray for you with these hands that are lifted go and begin to produce results go and heal the sick go and open doors for the oppressed in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for families that are trusting god for miracle marriages we release those marriages right now i pray for families that are trusting god for miracle jobs we release those jobs right now please believe me as i pray we release those jobs right now in the name of the lord jesus christ anyone here who the devil is eyeing for death that the devil has said you will not see the end of this year in the name of jesus we lift up that embargo we lift up that embargo favor like you have never seen receive it right now open doors like you have never seen receive it right now breakthroughs like you have never seen receive it right now i speak life to every dying thing in your life in the name of jesus christ whoever has rejected you may they look for you in the name of jesus christ i command prophetic dreams mysterious spiritual experiences may god show you the solution to your problems in dreams and visions whoever is behind the failure of your life we command judgment upon them in the name of the lord jesus christ i prophesy unto you access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to deep revelation access to insight in the spirit whenever they are looking for men to favor may they find you may they find you in the name of jesus you are blessed in the city and blessed in the country you are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in every tongue that rises up against you will be judged in the name of jesus i declare that the seal of the blood is upon you you have no covenant with failure you have no covenant with death may god use you mightily 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 I declare may the mantle of honor come upon your life 
that mantle that makes men honor you mysteriously i release it upon your life receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus the mantle of honor i pray for you extraordinary intelligence levels of mental acumen in the name of the lord jesus christ extraordinary intelligence I cast out the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death i rebuke it from your life in jesus name and every depression upon your spirit i release you from it right now every voice that has told you you will not succeed we cancel that voice right now in the name of jesus finally i pray for you passion for the things of god hunger for intimacy with the holy spirit grace for fasting and prayer genuine fasting and prayer access to spiritual power activations of the gifts of the spirit visions and and the move of the spirit upon your life in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. All those worshiping with us for the first time, please make your way to the front right now very quickly. We're really out of time. We have two minutes and we're out. Please celebrate all those who are worshiping with us. Some have come from far. Some from near different states. Please come. We have a prayer and a blessing for you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Keep clapping. They are coming. May God bless all of you who have invited them. Their lives will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah for all of you who have come here this is koinonia god bless you for being here we're here every fridays is a meeting that is put together by eternity network international you're welcome to fellowship and worship with us again and again and your life will never be the same in the name of the lord jesus christ stretch your hands towards them saints of god and let's bless them we release the blessing upon this house over your life no keep standing don't worry you can stand i prophesy to you in the name of jesus you will leave this place and return with dramatic testimonies whatever you came here with is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus christ i see two of you standing here there's miracle marriage coming for two ladies here specifically i'm seeing two ladies that's the reason why you came specifically i prophesied miracle marriage for you in the name of jesus christ for one of you the person you are going to marry is a banker and he will come to you before october your wedding will happen before december 31st in the name of the lord jesus christ we decree and declare over your life you will carry an unusual unction and everyone who sees you will know that you have come before the presence of god there is someone here you are standing you are going to have like one week of prophetic encounter stretch one week every night repeatedly you're going to have different people come to teach you certain things and on the sixth night you're going to have an impartation it's like a hand that will be laid upon you it's not demonic in the name of the lord jesus christ we bless you return with evidences return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ thank you so much for coming we love you and we honor you please follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf and then you have a few details celebrate them koinonia hallelujah hallelujah hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed 
and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you